Tonight's meeting of the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council is coming to you live from the Council Chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Nolan, your announcer for this program. Tonight, the 15th Metropolitan Council holds its 57th business meeting of a four-year term. This is the third council meeting of 2022. Tonight's council agenda is 35 pages long, involves 91 pieces of legislation, and includes one resolution and 25 second reading ordinances on public hearing, 21 res regular resolutions, 23 first reading bills, 13 second reading pieces of legislation, and five ordinances on third and final reading. On the agenda are also three appointments to city boards and commissions, including one to the Metro Community Oversight Board, and five ordinances up on third and final reading. On the agenda, also three appointments to those boards. One of, the, one of those appointments is, is, is to the Metro Community Oversight Board and then two are to the Transportation Licensing Commission. High speed is again being held during a continuing high of plateauing number and spread of COVID-19 infections, including the highly contagious Omicron variant that's here in Nashville and across Tennessee. State law has dropped the ability of the Metro Health Department to continue a mask mandate in all city-owned buildings. Therefore, wearing masks here tonight is recommended but not required. It appears the most significant piece of legislation the council will consider tonight is on third and final reading. It's BL 2021-961. It would set up a six-month pilot project around Metro Police to use license plate readers as a crime-fighting tool as well as to do other limited police work. Some say the city is behind even surrounding communities in using LPRs. Others remain concerned that uh, about potential privacy and racial profiling issues. For over a year, the council has deadlocked after, de after debating these matters. They've deadlocked to give any final approval on any bill on this subject. Two weeks ago, this current bill under concession received 22 votes to pass on second reading. It will need at least 21 votes tonight for final approval. There are be efforts now tonight, probably from those who op oppose it, to defer it, or perhaps even defeat it if possible. There may be some test votes to see which side, who has the most votes on what side at this point. The bill, by the way, is not amendable on third reading. Another zoning-related bill tonight on public hearing would have established a voluntary inclusionary housing program, promote affordable housing and workforce and, and uh, workforce housing. Under this program, the developer would be able to create inclusionary housing, receive a height and bonus under the project. Uh, this bill is pretty complicated, so it's been deferred before. It will be deferred again. The planning staff has had some absences in dealing with it. Also, the new planning director for Metro wants more time to be able to look at this, so the bill will be deferred again tonight. There are several resolutions on the council agenda tonight also of concern. Those include several resolutions about how to spend the city's American Rescue Funds in somewhat differing ways. For the second time, the council will consider RS-21-1303 to ask the city's COVID-19 Financial Oversight Committee to recommend appropriation of not less than $70 million in rescue funds for the economic development in disadvantaged communities, with particular emphasis on Bordeaux and North Nashville, and for funding the Nashville Small Business Recovery Fund. Meanwhile, another resolution, RS-2022-1356, would appropriate $20 million for that same, and in those same American rescue funds, create the same Metro Nashville Small Business Recovery Fund. There's a substitute resolution on that that'll also be before the council tonight. In that substitute, apparently makes enough changes in it that those who are supporting the $70 million pro 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 proposition now are supporting the $20 million, so it looks like that's the one that will likely to pass tonight. At the same time, there's a third resolution, RS-2022-1356, will allocate $1.1 million for the Mayor's Office of Economic and Community Development to create an inclusive and equitable economic development plan and policy and to conduct a market value an analysis which promotes business balance and strategic growth in Metro Nashville and in Davidson County. There's one on rescue fund appropriation tonight, RS-2021-1362, would allocate $1,046,000 to provide rent relief for vendors at the Nashville flea market. With these requests, the city will have approved spending almost $98 million of the Metro's nearly $260 million in American Rescue Funds, half of which were received by the city last July. In non-rescue fund resolutions, RS-2022-1366 would accept a nearly $300,000 Homeland Security grant from the state. The fund costs related to addressing identified planning, equipment, training, and exercise needs to re required to prevent, respond, and, re and, re and re recover from any acts of terrorism. RS-2022-1363 would approve an application for a $37,000 grant from the Tennessee Historical Commission to allow the Metro Historical Commission to continue its work begun last year to develop a comprehensive countywide cemetery preservation plan. Davidson County is home to more than 500 rural cemeteries. If the grant is approved, Metro must provide a nearly $25,000 match to that effort. Under moralizing resolutions related to the community, the council will honor David Taylor for his more than decade of service on the Metro Board of Zoning Appeals. Also recognize the 20th anniversary of the award-winning What's the 411 radio program hosted by Sharon Kay on WF. SK Jazzy 88 Radio on Fisk University, also recognizing the 50th anniversary of the Centennial Park Arts Center. Late file resolutions will also honor the life of Ilya Trevino, a well-known leader, journalist, and broadcaster in the Hispanic community. 
A late resolution will note the Jersey retirement of former Vanderbilt basketball star Shane Foster. And a final late resolution requests implicit bias training be required for all Metro employees. Also, uh, finally, on second reading bills, BL 2021-1014 would approve a new lease for the Cameron College Prep Charter School. At the last meeting, the council approved a new lease for one charter school, but rejected another because it failed to receive 21 votes needed for final approval. It's unclear what will happen tonight. Some council members don't like charter schools, believing they take away funds from other public schools. Others believe that charter schools are public schools that need to be supported. Also on second reading, the council will consider BL 2021-1049. It would lessen and amend the threshold for audit requirements for nonprofit organizations receiving uh, appropriations from the federal government. New threshold will apply to nonprofit organizations with an operating budget of less than $250,000 and those receiving grants of only up to $25,000. If you want to follow tonight's council meeting as it progresses, you can find the agenda and the staff analysis online. You can go to the Metro Council portion of the Nashville.gov website, then go to the Legislative Information Center. We'll also be placing the bill numbers on the screen when they come up for consideration so you can follow along on your agenda and keep up with where we are in the, in the meeting going forward. Let's now go to Vice Mayor Jim Shulman. He'll be gaveling tonight's council meeting into order shortly. All right, go ahead and bang it three times. Do it a little harder. There you go. All right. Will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, February 1st, 2022, the day before Groundhog's Day. Well, uh, and before 2222. Thank you, Councilmember Allen. Will all members of the council as well as the public please rise for the invocation remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Invocation this evening will be offered by our very own 11th District Council Member Larry Hager. Council Member Hager. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Please bow your head. Dear God of justice and mercy, thank you for the gift of life and the opportunity to serve the people of our city. Help us to act with the character and conviction. Help us to listen with understanding and goodwill. Help us to speak with charity and restraint. Give us a spirit of service. Remind us that we are the stewards of your authority. Guide us to be the leaders your people need. Help us to see the humanity and dignity of those who converse with us and to treat all persons, no matter how weak or poor, with the reverence that your creation deserves. And finally, Father, renew us with the strength of your presence and the joy of your helping to build a community worthy of all human persons. We ask this in your name and glory, confident in your goodness and love. Amen. Amen. Okay, turn around, please. Thank you, ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job, okay. <clears throat> Y'all may be seated. So uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, Maya Sherman Nicholas, uh, who is a first grader, and she has the official title tonight of Banger of the Gavel. So uh, you all, please welcome uh, Maya. Good job. Okay. So you get to keep this. That's just who you are. Okay. Okay. And just go steep down. But watch your step right here. Okay. And then you can go join your mom. Good job. All right, without objection, we will suspend the calling of the roll. Ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. 
Um, is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting from January 18th? There is a motion properly seconded. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Uh, Mr. Clerk, any messages from the mayor? There is a message from the mayor. All right. Dear Vice Mayor Shulman and members of council, pursuant to regulations of the Tennessee Comptroller's Office, the attached reports on debt obligation must be submitted to the Metropolitan Council and presented at a meeting of the body before filed with the controller. As previously approved by the Metropolitan Council, the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County Water and Sewer Revenue Commercial Paper, Paper Notes Series 2022 RS 2021-1280 and the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County Water and Sewer Revenue Extendable Commercial Paper Note Series 2015 RS 2021-1281 as amended became effective January 11, 2022. The Water and Sewer Commercial Paper Program are a commitment of $400 million. The Water and Sewer Commercial Paper Program serves as bond anticipation notes for capital projects related to the system. Please visit the city's investor relations page for additional information. As always, we appreciate the Metropolitan Council's support on these important financing initiatives. Sincerely, John Cooper, Mayor. All right, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, all right, so a couple of items before we get started. Um, as uh, council members know, we have a long-standing tradition. Uh, if we have candidates that are running for office, we let them not make a campaign speech, but just introduce themselves. I know that we have one in the back. Uh, sir, you are recognized. Thank Your you, Honor. Vice Mayor, members of the council. I'm John Aaron Holt, and I've been serving as general sessions judge for now 24 years, and I'm running for re-election. And I thank you for, from all the general sessions judges. We thank you for your support and uh, in your job and the things that you do for our community. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. And Your Honor, you're welcome to stay if you want. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. A couple of other things. Uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, there is a large amount of balloons sitting over above Councilmember Gloria Hauser's birthday. Uh, she is turning 35 today. Congratulations. <laughs> And um, I also uh, want to recognize former council member Edith Taylor Langster. She had a birthday yesterday. Uh, she is turning 36. She is not here, but uh, she will be turning 30. Uh, she turned 36 the day before council member Hauser. Um, we want to wish uh, council member Porterfield well as she continues to recover. Uh, so she's, um, she's working on uh, trying to get better and to get back here. Um, um, want to... Um, uh, send our thoughts and prayers to council member Suara, uh, who has had a, a, I know I'm looking at her, a very difficult week and uh, council member Suara, we're glad you're here. And um, we just want to acknowledge um, that we are thinking of you and, and hoping that you get through this. Okay. All right. Um, as you know, our city has uh, been in quite a cold spell uh, over the last several weeks. About to feel those very cold temperatures again. Today was very, very nice. Um, I do want to give a shout out to the folks at Metro Social Services, uh, the Metro Homeless Impact Division, and a host of other groups uh, who have been working uh, some very serious overtime uh, to keep people safe and warm in Nashville. So um, if you see anybody from Social Services, Homeless Impact Division, or anybody else, you ought to thank them. They are doing a very, very good job. Um, as you may remember, there are four vacancies on the Metropolitan Community Oversight Board, terms expiring January 31st, 2025. Of these four vacancies, two members must be representatives of either a community organization or a private petition signed by 50 residents of Davidson County. Uh, in addition, one vacancy is to be filled by nominations submitted by the council members, and one vacancy um, is to be nominated by the mayor. Ten today at 4.30 was the deadline for nominations. Uh, I'm going to read you the nominations. We will not be voting on them tonight. In, instead, uh, February 8, 2022, at noon is the deadline for these individuals to get their uh, information in. And then at our next meeting, February 15, 2022, uh, there will be appearances before the Rules, Confirmations, and Public Elections Committee. And then um, this body will uh, elect and confirm uh, the members. So five uh, 
individuals turned in nominations properly today. Uh, here are the nominations. Uh, Walter Holloway was nominated by Council Member Hurt. Uh, Jamal Campbell Gooch, nominated by Black National Assembly. Uh, Edward Cahoe, nominated by Open Table Nashville. Uh, Michael uh, Milliner, nominated by the NAACP Nashville Branch. And Maxine Spencer, nominated by Workers' Dignity. So we will send all this information out to you. Again, they have to get their nomination information in and then they will become before rules at the next meeting and then it will be an election um, before this body. So again, uh, just to make sure you remember, uh, of the four vacancy, two members must be representatives of either community organization or private petition. So um, two of those members will come from those groups. One vacancy is to be filled by nominations submitted by council members and uh, a vacancy to be submitted by the mayor's uh, office. Um, I had asked uh, council member Antoinette Lee uh, as uh, chairperson of the education committee if she would be willing to provide some initial information to this body uh, concerning um, the educational funding that was discussed last night in uh, Governor Lee's State of the State Address. Um, and Council Member Lee said that she would do that. Council Member Lee, you are recognized. Thank you so much for letting me um, share these comments with you. I will say, I'm sure all of you have seen in your email that our uh, dynamic squad um, with uh, Ms. Hauser's our um, lobbying firm also sent something out outlining uh, what was done um, last night. Uh, the governor committed to updating our 30-year-old funding process for K-12 public schools. He is putting one million, I'm sorry, one billion, with a B, new reoccurring money in public schools across Tennessee. He, the budget includes first-time funding to expand high school and middle school career and technical opportunities. For the first time, the governor has committed to investing a billion to public education. He has the money for schools and as part of his $52 billion budget. He suggested raising teachers' pay this year by $125 million, and I will tell you that the governor's budget was embargoed until late yesterday this morning, or, and this morning, so a long um, an analysis of it is still to come. Also, we know how the funding, we do not know how the new funding process is going to look. The new formula will start, will not start until the fiscal year 2024. The funding will be utilized in 23 for career technology improvements in all high schools and middle schools. What each of us should be doing is asking if just one billion is a part of the formula, will my district come out ahead compared to the current funding and the way that that is done? 125 million for teacher salaries sounds good, but we are talking 125 million for um, X amount of teachers. Without knowing how the new process will work, we have to wait until the numbers have been run before we truly know how this will affect us and our city. But we should be hopeful and are going to, that everything is gonna come out great or at least that the intention is to now put money and funding in for public education in a way that hasn't been done before. We should be hopeful that the remarks from last night indicate a shift in the chronic underfunding of education in our state and specifically for our city. I'm sure our um, superintendent and her staff will give us uh, more detailed funding on this and mine were only some general comments, but I thank you very much for allowing me to do that. And you can actually pull up online the governor's whole speech if you would like to. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Council Member Lee. Um, Council Member Lee did that at, at my request. This is a, 
obviously a, a tremendous amount of money that's being discussed, and um, I think we'll be getting more details, and that will be coming through education and also the budget committee. Uh, but we thought it was important to go ahead and, and start talking about it since it happened last night. So again, thank you, Council Member Lee. Um, obviously with that and so many other things going on, a lot of, uh, a lot of things happening uh, right now in our city these days. Um, I'm reminded of what Lester Holt says at the end of his nightly news broadcast every night. Um, take care of yourself and each other. So we are now ready to proceed to elections and confirmation. Council Member Vercher, do we have a report from the elections uh, from the Rules Committee? You're on. Yes, Vice Mayor, we do. Okay. For the Community Oversight Board appointment of Mr. Andrew Goddard for a term expiring January 31st, 2025. Uh, rules recommended approval, five, four, and zero against. For the Transportation Licensing Commission appointment of Mr. Michael W. Hayes for a term expiring January 31st, 2024 and also for an appointment to the Transportation Licensing Commission from Ms. Betsy Williams for a term expiring January 31st, 2024. Rules recommended approval for both, 640 against. Okay, so uh, Councilor Member Vercher, um, the, um, uh, I may have heard this uh, wrong, but I believe Ms. Williams had uh, her, um, her nomination form came in late, is that correct? That is correct, Vice Mayor. Okay, so I believe in order to get that properly before the body, have to move to suspend the rules just because it came in late. I'm a yield to uh, her district council member, vice mayor. All right, who's her? Councilman O'Connell. Oh, Councilman O'Connell. Yeah, we okay. discussed this in rules, vice mayor. Councilman O'Connell, uh, you just need to move to suspend the rules if that's okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, you should be on. Oh, okay, maybe I am now. All right. Uh, yes, I'd like to move to suspend the rules, please. Okay, ladies and gentlemen of the council, uh, all we're doing is the, 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 the uh, questionnaire form came in late. It's in, but it came in late. Uh, all, what Council Member O'Connell is doing is move to suspend the rules so we can accept the questionnaire and go ahead and make the selection tonight. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? Council Member Allen, did you have a question on this one? Okay. Oh, sorry, okay. Uh, so any objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, rules are suspended. Um, Councilmember Vercher, Councilmember O'Connell, I just need, I need a, um, a motion to approve all three. I move to approve all three, Vice Mayor. All right, so uh, the motion is to approve all three. Uh, Andrew Goddard for the Community Oversight Board, Michael Hayes for Transportation Licensing Commission, and Ms. Betsy Williams for the Transportation Licensing Commission as well. Properly seconded by Councilmember O'Connell. Um, any questions? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. You've heard the motion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion is approved. Uh, if, uh, if these individuals are here, Mr. Andrew Goddard, if you would stand up. Mr. Goddard, there you are. Mr. Goddard, uh, Mr. Michael Hayes, Transportation Licensing Commission, and Ms. Betsy Williams, also for the Transportation Licensing Commission. Thank you all for your willingness to serve Nashville. <laughs> And um, you all are welcome to stay as well. Or you can sneak out when we're not watching, all right? All right, we are now ready for resolutions uh, on public hearing and bills on public hearing. Um, here's how that works. Call up the resolutions. Uh, we only have one tonight and, and bills. Uh, we're gonna call them one at a time, refer to the sponsor. Unless the sponsor moves to defer the public hearing, the sponsor will call for a public hearing. Then ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor of the resolution or bill. Ask for a show of hands for those who are here in opposition to the resolution or bill. If anyone in favor of the measure wishes to speak, I will ask you to come forward to that back microphone. Uh, introduce yourself, give us your address, and you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Then ask the same for anybody who's opposed. See if they wish to speak as well. After that process, I will close the public hearing and refer back to the sponsor. Um, Prior to taking up any measure tonight, unless, unless there's an objection, 
Uh, we will take item 21 of the agenda. Sorry, Councilmember Taylor, you're gonna jump the gun. I need to pull up item 21 of the agenda up at this time for purposes of handling a motion. Any, uh, any objection to that? All right, without objection, seeing none, we are on item 21 of the agenda. Uh, it is on page 11. Uh, this is BL 2022-1067 by Council Member Hall. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code uh, by changing from AR2A and SP to RM4 zoning for properties located at 4539 and 4608 Cato Road and Cato Road unnumbered and Ashland City Highway unnumbered. It's approximately 1,000 feet west of Amy Lynn Drive. Council Member Hall, uh, you're recognized on uh, BL 2022-1067. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I, you for me? some reason, the Okay, there we go. Okay. Delayed reaction. Uh, right. We're gonna to defer to the first meeting in March. Okay, so the, your motion is to defer to the first meeting yes, in March? Okay, I've got a, a second from both Council Member Mendes and Council Member Hurt. Motion is to defer to the first meeting in March. All right, um, you've heard the motion. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this measure is deferred to the first meeting in March. Okay, we are now back to um, the regular calendar. Uh, this is on page two, it's item one. It's RS 2022-1355 by Council Member Taylor. Uh, this is a resolution exempting 1033A and 1033B, 21st Avenue North, from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a short-term rental property non-owner occupied permit, pursuant to section 17.16.070U of the Metropolitan Code. Council Member Taylor, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to open the public hearing. Okay, so Council Member Taylor has moved to open the public hearing, uh, declare it open. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. All right, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. I don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak? Nope. All right, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Taylor, you're recognized on your resolution. Thank you, I believe I need a committee report. Okay, committee reports, government operations. Who's got that one? It is uh, Council Member Hancock. You won't believe this, Vice Mayor, but I would like to tell you that we are still unanimous in government operations. For RS 2021-1355, we voted seven in favor, zero against. All year long, we've been in agreement. That's amazing. I, I, we may send some of the folks in Washington down to your committee. We'll see how it's done. All right, Councilmember Taylor, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to move for approval. All right, so Council Member Taylor has moved for approval of RS 2022-1355, properly seconded, back to you. Thank you, and br just briefly, um, you know, I, I support uh, the legislation with the distance. Um, uh, it, in the language of the, re uh, uh, excuse me, of the legislation uh, regarding the distance, says the school, uh, this school so happens to be Meharry Medical College, which is a, a post-doctoral school. Um, so I feel very comfortable um, uh, with the request here. So uh, again, I would like to remove my, uh, renew my approval, uh, motion for approval. Thank you. All right, so Council Member Taylor has moved again for approval, it was properly seconded. Um, he has moved for approval on um, this resolution on public hearing. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. aye. Opposed no, the resolution is adopted. Uh, can you all hear okay? It sounds like the microphones are either weak or the air conditioning is strong or both. Or maybe it's my hearing. Thank you, Council Member. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Council Member. Okay. Um, uh, Danielle, can you check? Can you just check and see if we can turn up the microphones a little bit? Okay. All right. We'll, we'll keep going, but hopefully uh, we'll be able to hear a little bit better. better. We are now on bills on public hearing. Uh, we are on item number two. Uh, BL 2021-832 by Council Member Allen, O'Connell, uh, Suara, and others. Um, this is an ordinance to amend various sections of Title 17 of the Metropolitan Zoning Code to incentivize inclusionary housing with any residential development that seeks additional development entitlements beyond that permitted by the current base zoning district. Council Member Allen, you are recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. 
Mr. Vice Mayor, um, I would like to move an amendment and then defer before the public hearing. All right. So, Council Member Allen, uh, there's an amendment in the packet. It's amendment number one. Council Member Allen has moved for passage of amendment number one. Properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation. Uh, of thank the you. Amendment. Yeah, brief, brief explanation. Um, this this is a fairly complex bill, and um, it is being just now going before the Planning Commission because we have a new planning. Uh, uh, we have a new housing director in the planning department who just wanted more time uh, to review the bill. And so it was deferred in planning and that's why it's here. Uh, but it, we're not ready to hear it before the council until we get the recommendation from planning. However, there is an amendment that the planning commission was interested in, um, in being able to see an official version of. So what the amendment would do is put uh, the responsibility for doing the, the financial calculations for this incentive on the assessor's office as opposed to Metro Finance, which is where we, we had initially said these calculations would be done by Metro Finance in consultation with the assessor's office. We had a great meeting with all the stakeholders and everyone agreed that the assessor's office really had the, the capability to do this much more efficiently. So this simply says that the assessor's office will determine the additional tax revenue that could be expected um, and also the, the market rent rates that would be expected. And that's the math that has to be done uh, to ensure that we can make this incentive happen. So I know this is complicated. I think if I keep explaining it month after month, then we'll finally vote on it and then we'll know what we're doing. So with that, I would like to move the amendment that simply says that the assessor's office has agreed that they will do these financial calculations. All right, so council member Allen has moved uh, amendment number one to Bill 2021-832, properly seconded. Any discussions on the amendment? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. We're on amendment number one. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. Okay, now Council Member Allen, you're on Bill 2021-832 as amended. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to defer the bill as amended to the first meeting in March. <coughs> Okay, so the motion is to defer BL 2021-832 as amended uh, to the first meeting in March, so we will not have a public hearing tonight. It's properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, BL 2021-832 is uh, deferred to the first meeting in March. Okay, we are now on item number three, which is on page three, and we can take that together with item number four. These are by Council Member Van Rees. Uh, Bill 2021-853 is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code by applying an historic landmark overlay district to property located at 435 Old Hickory Boulevard, southeast corner of Donna Drive and Old Hickory Boulevard, zone RS20, it's 1.44 acres. Uh, and Bill 2021-889, uh, which is the companion bill, uh, it's an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions, uh, a proposed historic landmark, landmark overlay district to include properties located at 4035 Old Hickory Boulevard at the southeast corner of Donna Drive and Old Hickory Boulevard. Proposed or ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Uh, Council Member Van Rees, uh, you are recognized on those two bills. Uh, yes, I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All right, so this time I'm watching. It looks like we have a planning and zoning committee report before we get there. Council Member Weathers? Uh, it's uh, BL 2021-853 and 889. They're on public hearing, but they were re referred to your committee. I don't believe so. I, I think that um, they were one. heard uh, before the February public hearing, I mean the uh, January public mm -hmm. hearing. Okay. And then we deferred the public hearing to catch up with something. And now it's back on public hearing. There was a, a sign... I well, mean, eventually it'll get there. It's just on my calendar that it was referred over yeah. there, so I was checking. Okay. We had yeah. a public hearing notice for um, uh, January, but we found out that it was not properly noticed, and so we deferred for the hearing in February. February, right? Yeah, it's February. <laughs> I'll, we're just checking our notes. That's fine, yeah. yeah. I believe the recommendation would have been made in December. All right. <clears throat> so um, my mistake, it's on my calendar as being referred to the committee.
but I assume it'll it'll eventually get there at some point. All right, so now back to your bills. Do you want to open the public hearing? Yeah, let's do that. All right, let's have a discussion. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what we are doing is um, sometimes bills get referred to committees before they actually have the public hearing. So my calendar is doing that, but apparently it doesn't have to be done, so we're going to go on with the public hearing. Declare the public hearing uh, open. We are on Bill 2021, 853 and 889. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measures. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measures. Councilmember Van Rees, I, I didn't see any hands up. Uh, that so Oh, go ahead. Declare the public hearing closed. Uh, uh, you're thank on your you bills. for that. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, colleague, for the delay in this. Uh, the uh, uh, public review of this actually took place late last year, um, and uh, the neighborhood association was able to actually tour the building. I appreciate the assistance of the historic commission, and with that, I move approval. Okay, so Councilmember uh, Van Rees has moved approval of both 853 and 889 for passage on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion on those two bills? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of those two measures say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, both those bills passed. Thank you, Councilmember Van Rees. All right. Um, so uh, we are now on BL 2021 922 by Council Members Taylor, Glover, Murphy, and others. Uh, this is an ordinance amending section 17.04.060. 17.08.030 and 17.16.070 of the Metropolitan Code to implement a distance requirement for the bar or nightclub use. Councilmember Taylor, you are recognized on your bill. Thank you. Uh, the track with planning, um, this has been pushed down the road a little bit in planning. Um, I would like to uh, bring this back, uh, defer this to the First meeting in March. First meeting in March. Okay, so uh, Council Member Withers, I'm just checking on my report. It says it came to your committee. Did it come, uh, Council Member Withers? Um, Mr. Vice Mayor, it's not come before Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee. It did come before the Planning Commission, right? But not before our committee. Okay. And the Planning Commission recommended a deferral. Uh, staff are working with several departments to do some analysis. Uh, of, of the implications of this and how these uses are classified in the code. Okay. The Planning Com Commission has had an initial hearing of it. It's going to come back before the Planning Commission, but it's not come before the committee yet. Okay. No problem. Um. That is, that's correct. Exactly what he said. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And it didn't go into any other committees either. That's is that correct. correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, Council Member Taylor has moved to defer this to the first meeting in March. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Council Member Suara, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, there is a note on the bill that says that it will go before Planning Commission on 324. So will, will that happen before the January first meeting, or what does that mean? So, uh, Council Member Taylor, do you know? It should go to the Planning Commission the second meeting of February, but uh, I'll ask Ms. Milligan to... To check. Uh, Ms. Ms. Milligan has taken a look uh, and she is recognized after she's had a chance. Give her just a second. Uh, Ms. Milligan is checking. Hold on just a Hi. second. Okay. Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor, um, mm -hmm. Council Member, I think I just now told you incorrectly, it was deferred to the March 24th Planning Commission meeting, so it will need to be deferred to the April public hearing here. Apologies. Our February meeting is also February 24th. So, All yes, right. Council Member Taylor, uh, let me come back to you for another motion. How about that? Uh, that's great. I, um, I'll rescind that motion. Uh, thank you, Council Member Swore. I will now uh, move to defer to the first meeting in April. Okay. All right. So the motion is to defer uh, this measure, not have the public hearing tonight, but defer this measure to the first meeting in April. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Council Member Taylor. Uh, and thank you, Ms. Milligan. And thank you, Councilmember Sawar, for catching that. 
<clears throat> uh, we're on BL 2021-954 by Council Member Gamble. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 uh, by changing from, from SP to AR2A property located at 5050-10-5012 Clarksville Pike. It's approximately 2,400 feet northwest of Lloyd Road. It's 32.15 acres. Council Member Gamble, you are recognized. Thank you. Uh, open the public hearing. Okay. Uh, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Seeing nobody on either side, Council Member Gamble, declare the public hearing closed. Uh, you recognize on your bill. Committee report. Do I have one? Uh, there apparently there is no committee report, so okay. you're good. Okay. Proceed ahead. Motion to approve. All right. Council Member Gamble has moved to approve. Uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? We're on the bill on second hearing. Uh, all those in favor of BL 2021-954 for passing on second reading say aye. Opposed no. Uh, bill is adopted. Thank you, Council Member Gamble. Uh, we're on items number seven, and we can take it with item number eight. These are by Council Member Sledge. Uh, BL 2021-1037, ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RA to S and, S and CS to SP zoning for properties located at 2206, 2208, 2212, 2214, 2218, and 2220, 12th Avenue South, it's approximately 80 feet south of Lawrence Avenue is 1.87 acres, permit a mixed-use development. And um, item number eight, which is BL 2021-1038, uh, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for uh, BL 2021-1037. Proposed specific plan zoning district located at 2206, 2208, 2212, 2214, 2218, 2220, 12th Avenue South. It's approximately 80 feet south of Lawrence Avenue. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Council Member Sledge, you are on uh, both your bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move to open the public hearing, please. Okay. Declare the public hearing bo open on both 1037 and 1038. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures. See a couple hands back there. I got them. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Okay, we've got hands on both sides. Uh, those in favor wish to speak. If you would, please come to the microphone. Um, you will um, identify yourself, uh, give us your address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. So these are folks who are in favor of BL 2021 1037 and 1038. Again, name and address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Uh, good evening. Thanks for uh, having us here. Uh, Nick Dryden, uh, 1107 Carruthers Avenue. Um, I'm the architect on this project and, uh, and also a resident and uh, uh, contributor to the community in 12 South. Um, you know, this, this project's a culmination of over a year's worth of community engagement. We've had multiple community meetings, both in actually both uh, Councilman Sledge and Cal Councilman Cash's uh, district since they're so tightly intertwined at this uh, intersection. Uh, we've had, you know, overwhelming support of the project throughout the process. Um, I actually live a block away from um, the project site itself, so I'd, I'd have personal interest in this, you know, really turning out well. <laughs> and we, myself and my family and, and Many members, even on the design team, live in the neighborhood as well. So we all have, you know, added interest uh, in the project to 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 be a good neighboring product pro project. Um, so I'm not just the architect for this project. My family and I live just just right within the the, the vicinity of the site. Um, and you know, the, our client has gone through many links of really remarkable effort to to work with. Um, both immediate neighbors and also uh, neighbors at large of the neighborhood. So we've been really impressed by their effort and continued um, commitment to this project. The overall effort on this project be before us has also gone on for about eight years. So we're excited to see this, uh, this client really take it through uh, to, a to be a successful contributing project for the neighborhood. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, next speaker. Name, uh, address, and then two minutes. Sure. Uh, good evening. My name is John Gore. I'm with Barge Cawthon Civil Engineers. We're located at 6606 uh, Charlotte Pike. Uh, I'm the civil engineer on the project. And uh, as Nick said, we've been working on this project for over a year. Uh, we work very closely with planning staff, with NDOT, uh, with the other departments uh, in metro government, which review SPs. Um, we've had numerous 
uh, neighborhood meetings and the plans have on, undergone a lot of changes uh, since the first uh, iteration that went to planning back in January of last year. Uh, some of the uh, significant changes that we've made to the plan include a reduction in density and overall height. Uh, there was concern when we started uh, with the neighbors that are on the east side of the project on the other side of the uh, alley uh, properties that face 11th Avenue. So the massing was changed uh, to step down at the rear uh, property line to accommodate some of those concerns. Uh, the project is also con um, has a con uh, significant investment in uh, traffic calming and vehicular measures. Uh, when we started this project, our access was on the south of the property, uh, uh, opposite Linden, uh, but there was a lot of feedback from the neighborhood to move our access point uh, to the north, opposite uh, Ashwood. And we ended up uh, with a traffic circle, which was recommended by our traffic uh, study and confirmed by NDOT. Uh, and in addition to the uh, traffic measures along 12th South uh, neighborhood, traffic calming is a big issue in this neighborhood because a lot of the um, east-west traffic, which cuts through the neighborhood. So the uh, project has committed beyond just our NDOT traffic conditions to uh, build traffic calming measures in the blocks uh, between 12th South and Belmont. Um, an additional uh, concession made to the uh, residents on 11th Avenue was the parking garage, which faces east. A uh, metal screen barrier was added to the parking garage to screen the parking from that side. Um, removable, removal of residential uses from the property. Uh, as Nick said, this project has been proposed for, for seven or eight years, and some of the early uh, iterations had very intense re residential uses. Um, but that's the, uh, that's kind of our, um, specific uh, suggestions and requirements. So we uh, appreciate your uh, support and uh, thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Uh, anybody else in favor wish to speak? All right, those in opposition, if you would, please come on up. Anybody who wishes to speak in opposition, if you would come on up, line up, uh, need a uh, name, address, and then uh, you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Hello. Welcome. My name's Ann Kruger. I live at 2211A 11th Avenue South. Um, lived there seven years. My uh, home will share the alley with this development. I do want to thank Colby and the architect and the developers for meeting with us. They've been very good about that. And this is an improvement over many plans we've seen over the past six years. Um, so while it sucks for us that we're, instead of residences and trees, we'll have a four-story office building and a parking garage, we get that it's better. The concerns that remain are the alley and the traffic on Lawrence. The alley uh, will be widened. It currently serves about 14 houses, I believe. So it'll be widened, uh, but it has a one-lane entrance and exit on, on Lawrence. So the traffic coming out of the development, I believe is able to come out the alley. <clears throat> so it will be sharing the alley with us. And we're also concerned about garbage trucks, commercial garbage trucks, dumpsters. How will this work with a one lane alley going out onto Lawrence Avenue? <clears throat> Lawrence Avenue is a uh, shortcut between 10th and 12th. It, people, it's, it's well-traveled, people go very fast, and it's down to one lane because you can park on both sides of it. So people exiting or entering the alley at the one lane exit <laughs> and the entrance have a lot of difficulty already. So I'm concerned about that traffic, which I'll let someone else talk more about, and about the alley. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Hi, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. My name is Carrie Martin. I live at 2207 11th Avenue South. I'm just a couple houses down from Annie. Uh, and first, I'd like to characterize it also that the developers of the project have been outstanding to work with in trying to find solutions to some of the challenges in this landlocked area that they're trying to develop. Uh, just to kind of add to Annie's comments, if I can give you a visual, at the alleyway, that is the only access point for those of us who live on 11th Avenue. That's the way that we get to our garages, okay? And to give you a visual, the width of that street when it hits Lawrence Avenue is about as wide as these, the, the distance between these two pews, okay? And it's bordered on either side by houses, homes, nothing that can be moved. 
So just to re-emphasize what Andy is saying, our concern, I'm generally supportive of the development and I'm really looking for a great resolution because I think this is exciting, I'm new to Nashville, but my concern is how is that alley going to work as a one-way, even if it widens about 30 feet down where there is a little bit more egress, it still comes to a choke point on Lawrence. And because the other concern is cars park on either side of Lawrence Avenue, it presents a natural visual blockade. And because it is a cut through from 12th to 10th, it is already treacherous to get out. So I am for the project in general, but I think these are some of the concerns that have not entirely been satisfactorily addressed. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Name, uh, address, and uh, two minutes. Can I take this off? Is that okay? Yeah. Hey, um, my name is uh, Matt Carney. I live on, uh, uh, what is my address? 2225 11th Avenue South. So we would be uh, pretty close to the back of where this uh, proposed development would be. And uh, just uh, to paint a little picture too, 11th, so 12th is goes here, 11th is here, the, the development goes in between it. 11th is also the entrance to the school of Wedgwood Houston. So uh, every day at about 2.30, traffic is lined all the way up to Lawrence. Lawrence has two cars parked on it. Two cars can't even pass each other on Lawrence. And they're proposing to make the entrance of their alleyway on Lawrence, which is already a really narrow road. Uh, there isn't, two cars can't pass. I sent a video to Colby the other day of an ambulance stuck, couldn't get by traffic because it was lined up on both sides. Ambulance sirens going and just sat there and I just recorded him sitting there. An ambulance can't get by the street. I think uh, while the development sounds fun, I respect Nick, he's a talented architect. He does live uh, a block and a half farther than most of us that are of this, but he's a really talented, I think they've worked really hard trying to make something work. But I think the scope of the project is just too big for, uh, this isn't the Golds, this isn't Wedgwood Houston, this isn't Germantown, an industrial area that you're turning in, you, you have a blank slate on what to do with. This is, 12th was a street in a residential area that's grown. And, and I, I get developers wanna make money, they buy this property, but it's not like some of the other things that have happened, like Tabernacle, where they put 19 houses. I, the neighborhood would have supported that, they probably would have approved it with flying colors, or it's not like, uh, Two blocks up, another church they've torn down and they built five or six houses with condos. Last time we were here and we did this whole rigmarole, uh, someone said, you know, I'd like to some, see something like Paris where there's a uh, restaurant, condos, and park, parking behind it, you know. So uh, I just, all that to say, thank you so much for your time. We do not support it. I wish they could do something that would work with the neighborhood better. Thank right. you very much for your time. Thank you. Anybody else uh, uh, not in favor wish to speak? All right, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Sledge, uh, you're recognized on your two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll move approval um, with a comment if you don't mind. All right, um, so Councilmember Sledge has moved approval of 1037 and 10, 1038 for passage on second reading properly seconded. Back to you. Uh, first of all, extreme gratitude to residents who came out, Annie especially. I know she has been involved in this for basically the whole time we've been talking about this. Uh, members, this property predates my time in office. That's how long this has been going on. Um, it was alluded to in the comments that it was first uh, proposed on this site to be extremely dense residential. I think it was north of 400 mm -hmm. units at the time. Um, it, it was very clear that this site was going to be too difficult for something like that. It's since gone through ownership changes multiple times. We have had a lot of community meetings over the years on it. And the plan that's before us today is actually fully commercial does not have any residential in it, which is a little odd for me, I know. But as we came to those conversations in the community, it seemed like a commercial use that had the chance to bring along services that right now the 12th Avenue South Corridor does not have, does not enjoy, um, would be perhaps the best, the best option, the best solution. Regarding the ingress and egress and issues, they are all completely valid. Um, Lawrence is actually the narrowest right of way in the entire 12 South neighborhood. Um, there have been multiple side mirrors swiped off of cars over the years because of the issues there. And I have spoken with neighbors over the years about should we be doing one side no parking? Should we be doing different configurations? 
all those are still on the table, and I imagine some of them will probably have to come to fruition um, in part because of this. Uh, regarding Waverly Belmont's pick up and drop off line, that has been a major issue as well. Thankfully, our council approved the remaining funding to change the ingress and egress, the pick up and drop off for Waverly Belmont. So right now, MMPS is going through the design process. Um, David Prophet estimates me it'd take about a year, but he already had designs in the works because several years prior, we funded the first half of that. So 100% agreed, there is still a, um, what I, the width of the alley that's being discussed, the entrance point at Lawrence will need to be addressed. One final missing piece, and I know I will sound like a broken record on this, but one of the infrastructure pieces to diminish using Lawrence as a cut from, from 12th to 10th is the 12th Avenue South bike lane because it does create a median that discourages, if not prohibits, left turns going south on 12th onto Lawrence. So it would enable the cut through portion of that to basically be diminished, if not totally eliminated. So members, I would ask for your support tonight. Councilmember Cash has been a great partner in working with members on the District 18 side of 12th on this. These few traffic issues do remain. I hope to be working with everyone involved to solve those, and we've already got solutions for some along the way. But I do think after eight years, I think this is the best possible solution that we're going to get as far as consensus goes, and I'd request your support. Thanks, everybody. All right, so Councilmember Hall has moved, uh, sorry, Councilmember Sledge has moved for passage on Bill 2021, 1037 and 1038 for passage on second reading. Again, they were properly seconded. Uh, Councilmember Cash, you are recognized. Yeah, thanks. I just want to say real quickly that I think uh, Councilmember Sledge has worked hard on this. I know we had a meeting like at the very beginning of this term um, that kind of didn't, didn't, wasn't, didn't, wasn't that productive or we couldn't find a solution. He's worked hard uh, finding something that works for most people um, and and the, the developer the developers and architect have addressed a lot of the issues um, I appreciate him uh, thinking about my constituents on the other side of 12th and and insisting that that folks reach out to me to make sure that we address the concerns over there so I'm fully in support and thank councilmember council member sledge for his work on this all right thank you council member cash any other discussion we're on a motion to approve um, the two bills 1037 and 1038. Seeing nobody else in the queue, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of a passage on second reading of 1037 and 1038 say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bills pass on second reading. Okay. Uh, next bill up is uh, BL 2021-1043 by Council Member Hall. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from IR to OL zoning for property located at Jenny Brown Lane, unnumbered south of Ashland City Highway and west of Burnley Parkway, 17.25 acres. Council Member Hall, you recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We're also going to defer this one to the first meeting in March. We've got to redo the notices. All right. <clears throat> so this one is deferred to the first meeting in March. That's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this, um, that bill is deferred to the first meeting in March. Uh, next bill up is Bill 2021-1056 by Councilmember Parker. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws uh, by change from RM20ANS to RM20A zoning for property located at 123 Elmhurst Avenue at the northwest corner of Lucille Street and Elmhurst Avenue is 0.13 acres. Councilmember Parker, uh, you're on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Um, no committee reports, oh. as far as I can tell. You go to in front of any committees? Uh, I guess we have not yet. Okay, so you're good to go. Thank you. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. I see nobody on either side. Declare the public hearing closed. <coughs> Councilor and Parker, you're on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Uh, Councilman Parker has moved for approval of BL 2021-1056 uh, for passage on second reading properly. Seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, we're on BL 2022-1057 by Council Members Taylor and Toombs. So it can be taken with uh, BL 2022-1058. Hold on just a second.
All right, so um, they're the same sponsors, but it's in, is it in Councilmember Toombs District or Councilmember Taylor's District? Oh, it's in both, so you all just took turns signing on to this thing. All right, who wants to handle these two bills? Councilmember Toombs is elected uh, because Councilmember Taylor was the first one to raise his hand and point. So we're on items number 11 and 12, BL 2022-1057, and BL 2022-1058, their companion bills. Uh, 1057 is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a corridor design overlay district to various properties located along Clarksville Pike and Dr. D.B. Todd Jr. Boulevard from Abernathy Road southward, southward to Buchanan Street, zone CSCLMULR6MULMULA, MUGA, SPOL, and OR20, and partially located within a plan unit development overlay district. It's 176.03 acres. <clears throat> and then BL 2022 1058, uh, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2022 1057, proposed corridor design overlay district located along Clarksville Pike and Dr. DBT Dodd Boulevard from Abernathy Road southward to Buchanan Street Zone CSCL, MUL R6, MUL R6, MULA, MUGA, SPOL, and OR20, partially located within a plan unit development overlay. It's 176.03 acres. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of building. Council Member Toombs, you're the lucky one that got these two. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Okay, to clear the public hearing open, a show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two measures. Besides Council Member Taylor. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the two measures. Seeing nobody uh, in the gallery that uh, has their hand up, to close the public hearing closed. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you. Move for approval. Okay, Council Member Toombs has moved for approval, seconded by Council Member Taylor. Uh, any discussion, uh, proper, properly second, any discussion on these two measures? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. We're on page eight of the calendar. It is uh, BL 2022-1059 by Councilmember Rosenberg. It can be taken with BL 2022-1060. Um, 1059 ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending the Stevens Valley specific plan, property located at 441 Union Bridge Road, southeast corner of Union Bridge Road and Pasquo Road. It's zone SP, it's 23.48 acres to permit a mixed use development. And then the companion bill, which is BL 2022-1060, ordinance to authorize building material restriction requirements for BL 2022-1059, proposed specific plan zoning district located at 441 Union Bridge Road, southeast corner of Union Bridge Road and Pasquo Road, zone SP is 23.48 acres, proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of building. Council Member Rosenberg, uh, you recognized on your two bills. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, to clear the public hearing open, a show of hands of those who are here in favor of the two measures. Okay, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition uh, to the two measures. Okay, so I have hands on both. Um, those in favor wish to speak, if you would please come forward. Uh, uh, name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Uh, yes, sir. My name is John Avery. I'm an elder at Stevens Valley Church, which is located at 6000 Pasquo Road. Uh, we are directly across Pasquo from the development. Uh, we're not formally part of the development, but we are contiguous to it. We acquired our property in um, early 2018, began construction in late 18, and finished... Um, a 43,000 square foot uh, facility, which is phase one of a three phase master plan. Uh, and we're able to have our first service on March 1st of 2020, just in time for COVID. Um, and during the construction process, and actually when we first bought the property, uh, there were commitments about uh, infrastructure changes and improvements that would be made that uh, we had with the, the developer of Stevens Valley and um, the significant uh, improvements like a serious widening of Pasqua Road. And I don't know if the council members are familiar with that road, but it has gone from a, barely a one lane, almost dirt road to like a, a three lane, two lanes and a turning lane, a beautiful road, uh, utility, infrastructure was run under the road and, and uh, capacity increased greatly to service the uh, 
the coming development, but also to service our church. And all of these commitments were uh, the time frames that we were relying on were either met or exceeded uh, by the developer. And during, during our time out there, uh, the developer has been very sensitive to uh, keeping uh, the community aware of, of any changes that are going on and uh, getting feedback and, and again, very, very uh, timely very timely in uh, in meeting their commitments and we support their uh, or this ordinance. Thank you. Tony, thank you. Uh, next speaker, name, address, two minutes. Good evening. My name is Greg Tidwell. I'm with Smith G Studio Architects Principal. We're at uh, 602 Taylor Street here in Nashville. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a history on this uh, development. The development actually straddles the county line between Davidson County and Williamson County. Predominantly, the development to date over the past several years has been on the Williamson County side of the line, which has been limited to single-family uh, residential. The development pattern has been established there. Uh, the quality of development is traditional neighborhood development. This bill that's before you tonight is to amend the SP on the Davidson County side of the, of the line, which is the traditional neighborhood town center. Uh, we are currently entitled for a variety of mixed uses, including commercial, multifamily, single family and townhomes and other uses, including office. This SP amendment is really looking at taking what was um, approved several years ago and improving upon it. Some of the things that we're looking to improve upon with this bill is a smaller block structure, which will help the pedestrian connectivity through the town center and provide a variety, a, a better variety of residential product types, where before we were looking at bigger buildings predominantly mixed use with stacked flats. The revised SP that we're looking at tonight includes finer grain uh, housing types and a better variety of housing for people living in Davidson County and at Stevens Valley. Um, we're also including more open space with this revised SP. We've been able to tighten up the plan quite a bit. So we actually have more meaningful common open space in the town center now. Um, as the speaker before had said, the developer has spent many, many dollars improving the infrastructure here, including a new roundabout, including a new traffic signal at Highway 100. And a recent traffic study has shown that those improvements that have been accounted for and implemented can handle the additional density that this SP amendment is looking to deliver. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Name, address, two minutes. Thank you. I'm Trey Rochford. I'm with Rochford Realty and Construction Company. We're the developer located at 2200 Abbott Martin Road in Green Hills. We're very proud of Stevens Valley. Uh, I'll, I'll try to summarize this briefly and not take up too much time. The reason we're here is because we found a way to make our currently approved plan better. Uh, as Greg mentioned, we got more open space, we got more product type. We found a way to redo the plan so that there's better vehicular traffic within the property, uh, minimizing traffic hitting the roads, and better pedestrian traffic uh, within the property as well. So uh, it, just to reiterate, we're here because we've got a better plan than the one that we currently have approved, and we're asking for your support. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Okay, those uh, who are in opposition, if you would, please come on to the uh, microphone. I'll need uh, name and address, <coughs> and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Now, come on up. Thank you, sir. My name's Ryan Jacob Wood. My address is 1433 Trace Ridge Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 37221. Uh, I've been in Trace side for about three years now, and I've seen uh, the growth in the area being discussed. Um, and while I think the roundabout has been a great ad addition to help traffic flow and widening of the roads has been wonderful, uh, Highway 100 is still a major problem. Uh, we have a assisted living facility that just opened, brand new, not sure on specifics of numbers or anything like that. Uh, there's an underdeveloped condominium uh, subdivision that's just sitting there waiting to be developed. Uh, I believe it's like plumbing, things like that has already been finished. Uh, Stevens Valley seems to be filling in pretty nicely with uh, single unit homes and uh, I feel like you know it's plenty of stuff going on over there already sounds like uh, I'm kind of late to the party um, sounds like it's kind of moving ahead whether we like it or not but to me it just seems like you know it's too much when is enough enough 
and uh, if if this does go through and there are uh, mixed u mixed use units added, uh, is there plans to expand Highway 100? Because um, that area right there during rush hour in the afternoon is a nightmare. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, uh, name, address, and you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Good evening. My name is Doug Jayner. I live at 8495 Poplar Creek Road in West Nashville. I'm here tonight to, to suggest to you that when a council member stands in front of the Planning Commission or stands in front of this council and states that he or she supports a zoning change, he or she should also disclose any financial conflicts of interest between himself and the developer and other businesses involved with the zoning change request. I've identified approximately $5,000 in campaign donations to Council Member Rosenberg from this developer and others working on this project. So, sir, um, this is a financial so, conflict of sir, interest and while not illegal, is unethical if not disclosed up sir, front. Uh, we, we need to, we're talking about a council Yes, bill. we are, and I get okay. two minutes and I live in the area. I've also identified another $5,000 in campaign contributions from a different developer to Councilmember Rosenberg. Sir, I get there, two minutes, Vice Mayor Shulman. I, I, understand, I will I not be denied my two minutes. Well, but I understand, but we're talking about a... We're talking about a zoning bill. South Harpeth Farms development, you may recall, was disapproved by the Planning Commission, but Rosenberg pushed it through regardless. We're talking 10 grand in campaign contributions attributed to zoo, two zoning changes in the past year. That's a lot of money. I've had the privilege of serving in a few board of director roles and was always expected to disclose any financial conflicts of interest when I'm voting on something. The residents of Bellevue have a right to know about these financial conflicts of interest. They have a right to know about the financial influence of these contributions. I'm submitting to you, Vice Mayor Shulman, that it's time for city council members to start disclosing financial uh, conflicts of interest with these zoning change requests. Thank you. All right, anybody else want to speak uh, in opposition to the particular measure? Okay, there are procedures to deal with uh, concerns you have, but we, were, uh, we're, we have public hearings on these measures to discuss whether they're good or not. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate the folks who came to speak in uh, support, and, and Mr. Wood, I'd love to discuss Highway 100 because he's right. Um, this plan does improve on what's over there in Stevens Valley right now and to move approval. So he, he approve. Oh, move, I didn't hear the last part. Move approval. Okay. Thank you. All right. So um, we're on BL 2022 1059 and 1060 for uh, the motion is to approve. Properly seconded. Discussion on the measures. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the two measures are adopted. We're now on uh, items number 15 and 16. Uh, these can be taken together. Uh, this is Bill 2022-1061 and 1062 by Council Member Rutherford. 61, 1061 is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from AR2A to SP zoning for private located at 1465 Old Hickory Boulevard, south, southern terminus of Harris Hill Lane to 81.38 acres to permit 291 single family residential units. And BL 2022-1062, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2022-1061. Pro proposed Pacific Plan Zoning District, uh, located at 1465 Old Hickory Boulevard, southern terminus of Harris Hills Lane, 81.38 acres. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Uh, Councilmember Rutherford, you are recognized on your two measures. Thank you, Mr. President. I move deferral to the uh, to bo for both of these to the first meeting in March. Okay. So the motion is to defer both these measures, 1061 and 1062, uh, to the first meeting in March properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the deferral motion passes. Thank you, Councilmember Rutherford. Thank you. Uh, we're now on BL 2022-1063, and that can be taken with 1064. These are by Councilmember Toombs. Um, uh, 1063, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a quarter design overlay district to various properties located along West Trinity Lane from Brick Church Pike Westward towards Free Silver Boulevard, Zone T L M U L A N S M U N A C S S P C N M U G A and M U L ninety four point forty seven acres, 
And then the companion bill, which is an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2022-1063, proposed corridor design overlay district along Western D Lane from Big Church Park westward toward Free Silver Boulevard, zone CL, MULA, NS, MUNA, CS, SPC, and MUGA, and MUL, 94.47 acres. Uh, proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Council Member Toombs, you are recognized. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open a public hearing. Okay, to clear the public hearing open, a show of hands of those who are here in favor of these two measures. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to these two measures. Councilmember Toombs, I, don't, I didn't see anybody. Uh, declare the public hearing closed. Uh, you're recognized on your two bills. Thank you, move for approval. Okay, Councilmember Toombs says move for approval both on 1063 and 1064. Properly seconded any discussion on the two measures. Uh, seeing none, all those in favor of the two bills say aye. aye. Opposed, no. I think Councilmember Allen was the only one who voted on that. Let's try that again. All those in favor of the two measures say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, those two bills are adopted. Thank you. And thank you, Councilmember Allen. Uh, items number 19 uh, and 20 can be taken together. These are Councilmember Syracuse. Bill 2022-1065. Ordinance to Mentano 17 of the Metropolitan Code. By changing from IWD to SP zoning for privately located 911 perimeter court, approximately 240 feet southeast of perimeter place drive, 5.57 acres, to permit 196 multifamily residential units. And uh, 1066, which is an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions and requirements for 1065 proposed specific plan zoning district, located at 911 perimeter court, approximately 240 feet southeast of perimeter place drive. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict in the construction of buildings. Councilmember Syracuse, uh, you're recognized on your two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of these two measures. All right. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the two measures. All right. Seeing nobody in opposition, uh, those in favor wish to speak. All right. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Syracuse, you're recognized on your bill. Thanks, Vice Mayor. Move approval. All right. Uh, Councilmember Syracuse has moved approval on 1065 and 1066. Uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on the two bills? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1065 and 1066 say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, two bills are passed. Thank you, Councilmember Syracuse. Uh, we've handled item number 21. Uh, item number 22, bill 2022-1068 by Councilmember Toombs. Uh, this is a zoning ordinance um, uh, by change from RA to RM15 NS zoning for properties located at 2137, 2139, 2139B, Buena Vista Pike, approximately 130 feet southwest of Cliff Drive. It's 0.31 acres. Councilmember Toombs, you are recognized on your bill. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Okay, to clear the public hearing open, a show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1068. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to 1068. Uh, seeing uh, nobody in opposition, those in favor wish to speak. Okay, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Okay, a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Uh, we're on BL 2022-1069 by Councilmember Hager. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from CS to MUNANS zoning for properties located at 207-209 Bridgeway Avenue, approximately 150 feet east of Keaton Avenue. It's 0.66 acres. Councilmember Hager, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move to open the public hearing, please. Okay, to clear the public hearing open, a show of, uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of this <coughs> measure. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. I don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Okay, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Hager, you're recognized. Move for approval, please. Councilmember Hager moves for approval. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? We're on BL 2022-1069. All those in favor of the bill on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Uh, we're on BL 2022-1070 by Councilmember Welsh. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code by changing from SP to MULANS zoning for properties located at Whitsett Road, a number of approximately 450 feet east of Miller's Court is 1.99 acres. Councilmember Welsh, you're recognized. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to uh, open the public hearing. All right, to close the public hearing open, a show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. All right, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. I uh, don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Welsh. Move to approve. Councilmember Welsh moves to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, we're on uh, BL 2022-1070, a motion to pass on second reading. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Item number 25 by Council Member Toombs, BL 2022-1071. Ordinance amend Title 17 by change from IR to MUGNS zoning for property located 407 Great Circle Road, northern terminus of Athens Way. It's 15, point, 15 acres. Council Member Toombs, uh, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open a public hearing. Okay, to clear the public hearing open, a show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Uh, those in, uh, there's nobody on either side. So I'm declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you. Move for approval. Uh, Councilmember Toombs has moved for approval of uh, BL 2022-1071 for passage on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, BL 2022-1071 say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill passes on second reading. Uh, last bill up on public hearings is BL 2022-1072 by Councilmember Druffel. Ordinance amend Title 17 by change from RS40 to SP zoning for property located at 504 Jocelyn Hollow Court, uh, northern terminus of Jocelyn Hollow Court. It's 5.61 acres uh, to permit a mix of uses. Councilmember Druffel, uh, you recognized. I move to uh, open the public hearing. Okay. Uh, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. All right, I see a long hand in the back. There she is. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. I see no other hands. Um, you seem very excited. Do you want to speak? Okay. She wants to speak from way in the back. This is your chance to be on television if you want to come up. All right. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Druffel, you're recognized on your bill. I move for approval. Council Member Druffel moves for approval on uh, second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, all those in favor of Bill 2022-1072 for passes on second reading, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the bill is passed on second reading. That completes um, our bills on public hearing. <clears throat> All right, so we are now on uh, the consent resolutions and resolutions. I'm gonna go through um, these um, measures on consent. Uh, listen carefully, if you need to bump anything, let me know, okay? Uh, item number 27, RS 2021 is on consent. Uh, RS 22-1358 is on consent. 1360 on consent, 1361 on consent, 1363 on consent, 1364 on consent, 1365 on consent, 1366 on consent, 1367 on consent, 1368 on consent, 1369 on consent. 1370 on consent, 1371 on consent, 1372 on consent, 1373 on consent, and 1374 is on consent. Anything needs to be bumped off? Uh, Council Member Parker. Uh, item 39, 1365. Okay, so RS 2022, 1365 is bumped. Anything else? All right. <clears throat> Okay, so we will go back and start reading them. Oh, Council Member O'Connell. Uh, can we bump, uh, did you have a, item 36 on consent? Uh, 36 is not on okay, consent. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> uh, item number 27, RS 2021 1252 by Council Member Hall. Resolution encouraging recycling efforts in Metropolitan National Davidson County, requesting the Metropolitan Department of Water and Sewer Services to incentivize recycling efforts. Uh, next item is <coughs> uh, item number 32, RS 2022-1358 by Council Members Young, Hancock, and Bradford. A resolution adopting Metropolitan Government Community-wide target of an 80% reduction in annual greenhouse gas emissions from 2014 levels by 2050. 
Uh, item number 34, RS 2022, 1360 by Allen Evans and others. Resolution accepting a comprehensive opioid simulant and substance abuse site-based program grant from the U.S. Department of Justice, bless you, acting by and through the Office of Justice Programs to the Metropolitan Government, acting by and through the Davidson County Sheriff's Office to serve men with histories of substance abuse disorder who are housed in DCO facilities. Um, item number 35, RS 2022-1361, by Allen and Bradford, a resolution approving an application for a major cultural institution grant for the Tennessee Arts Commission and the Metropolitan Government, acting by and through the Metropolitan National Arts Commission to provide general operating support. Uh, item number 37, RS 2022, 1363, Allen Withers, Welsh, and Bradford. Resolution approving an application for Davidson County Cemetery Preservation Plan Phase Two grant from the Tennessee Historical Commission and Metropolitan Government through the Historical Commission provide for a comprehensive countywide cemetery preservation plan. RS 2022, 1364, Allen Hancock and others. Resolution to approve an inter, uh, intergovernmental agreement to allow the National Public Library to assume uh, NECAT's uh, responsibilities for operating and, pro and programming the Metro owned cable channel for arts, education, public community access. Uh, item number 40, RS 2022, 1366, by Council Member Allen and Evans. Resolution accepting a Homeland Security Grant for the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency through the Office of Emergency Management to fund costs related to addressing identified planning, equipment, training, and exercise needs required to prevent, respond to, and recover from acts of terrorism. RS 2022, 1367, by Allen, Evans, and Bradford. Resolution approving a Partners in Protection Shelter Program participation agreement for discounts between the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and Borger Ingelheim Animal Health USA to offer discounted vaccines <coughs> and medicines for shelter animals at the Metro Animal Care and Control. Item number 42, RS 2022-1368, Allen and Sawara. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Jerniqua Moore against the Metropolitan Government of National Davidson County. Amount of $12,000 set amount to be paid on the self-insured liability fund. RS 2022-1369 by Council Member O'Connell, Withers and Young. Resolution authorizing 1501 Herman Street, LLC. Construct and install an area encroachment at 1501 Herman Street. Uh, item number 44, RS 2022-1370 by Parker, Withers and Young. Resolution authorizing the National Leased Housing Associates III to construct and install an aerial encroachment on 100 Dickerson Pike. Uh, item number 45, RS 2022-1371 by O'Connell, Withers and Young. Resolution amending ordinance number BL 2021-1027 to abandon an obsolete slope easement and temporary construction easement property located north of and adjacent to the former Fox Street right-of-way for the Paseo South Gulch project. RS 2022-1372 by Robert Syracuse Nash and others. A resolution recognizing David Taylor for his service on the Metropolitan National Board of Zoning Appeals. RS 2022-1373 by Council Member O'Connell. Resolution recognizing the 20th anniversary of What's the 411 with Sharon Kay. And uh, item number 48, RS 2022-1374. Council Members Hart, Johnson, Syracuse, and a host of others. Resolution recognizing the 50th anniversary of the Centennial Art Center. Uh, those are the items on the consent calendar. Anything need to be bumped off? All right, I need committee reports. Uh, Council Member Allen, you look ready to go. Mm -hmm. Budget and finance. Thank you, Mr. Bison. Your budget and finance considered many bills. Uh, RS 2022-1357, RS 2022-1359, RS 2022-1360, RS 2022-1361, and recommended approval on those, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2022-1363, RS 2022-1364, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2022-1366, nine in favor, zero against. RS 2022-1367, 10 in favor, zero against. And RS 2022-1368, nine in favor, zero against. RS, oh, and that's all the resolutions that we considered. Council member, uh, just to be sure, uh, 1365, oh, did darling. you get that one? I may have missed that. I thought we took that one off consent. 13. I may have scratched the wrong one out. Okay, thank you. You're faster than I am. It's still on my calendar. I'll tell you my system later. What uh, did you um, uh, did you get me while I wasn't listening? <laughs> All right, government operations and regulations, Council Member Hancock. Thank you, Mr. President. We considered RS 2021-1358 and RS 2022-1364, and hold your seats. We voted seven in favor, zero against, unanimous, again, all year. So we need to, Miss um, uh, Darby, we need to send them something where they have to vote against it, okay, just for the fun of it. 
Um, planning and zoning, Council Member Withers, you recognize. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee considered, go back through which ones are in consent, RS-2022-1363, RS-2022-1369, RS-2022-1370-1371, and we uh, recommended approval of each of those nine in favor, zero against, zero abstention. All right, thank you. Council Member Bradford, uh, Public Facilities, you recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public Facilities, Arts and Culture. We heard RS 2022-1361, 2022-1362, and 1364. For 1361, it was six in favor, none against. For 1362 and 1364, it was seven in favor, none against. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, Council Member Evans, Public Health and Safety. Good evening. Public Health and Safety heard RS-2022-1360, RS-2022-1366, RS-2022-1367, and voted uh, six in favor, zero against on all three. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Evans. Councilmember Vercher, uh, rules and confirmations. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. On RS-2022-1372, 1373, and 1374, rules recommended approval 640 against. All right, all right, thank you. And the last committee report, Council Member Young, Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, RS-2022-12, or actually 2021-1252. 2022-1369, 1370, and 1371 were all recommended for approval. Nine in favor, zero opposed. And I, do you want a motion? I would love to have a motion. Yes. I will move the consent agenda. All right, so Council Member Young has moved the consent agenda, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the consent agenda for resolutions, uh, indicate by saying aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the consent agenda passes. Okay. All right, we're going to go back and take up the bills that were not on the consent agenda. Uh, I have got, um, then the first one is item 28, RS 2021 1303 by Council Members Toombs, Hurt, Taylor, and Hall. Resolution requesting the COVID 19 Financial Oversight Committee recommend the Metropolitan Council. Uh, appropriation of not less than $70 million in ARPA funds be appropriated to the Mayor's Office of Economic Community Development for Economic Development in Disadvantaged Communities with particular emphasis on Bordeaux and North Nashville for funding of the National Small Business uh, Recovery Fund. Councilmember Toombs, uh, you recognize on your uh, resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'm going to withdraw this with a brief explanation, please. Okay, so it's withdrawn. There's no motion. It's just withdrawn, but I'll let you go ahead and finish. Uh-huh. Thank you. So I was able to work with Director Pogue on his small business plan. Uh, and so resolution 2022-1356 and 1357 actually encompasses what I wanted to see in the plan, particularly having money specifically set aside for North Nashville and Bordeaux. And so that's why I am withdrawing it. Okay. So thank you, Councilmember Toombs. Uh, the resolution is withdrawn. Okay. Okay. Uh, next one up is um, RS... Um, next one up is item number 29, RS 2022-1326, uh, by Council Member Gamble, Withers Hall, and Toombs. It's a resolution requesting the Metropolitan Planning Commission, Metropolitan Planning Department review uh, to ama and amend as needed the current general plan for Nashville and Davidson County, Nashville. Next, uh, Council Member Gamble, uh, you are rec recognized on your resolution. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for a deferral with a brief explanation. Okay, so this one was referred to planning and zoning. Council Member Weathers, uh, let me get that committee report. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning, zoning, uh, planning and Zoning Committee did uh, support Councilmember Gamble's motion for a one meeting deferral. Uh, nine in favor, zero against, zero abstention. Okay. All right, uh, back to you, Councilmember Gamble. Thank you. Uh, we motion uh, move for a deferral in the Planning Committee uh, because we, unfortunately, members of the planning staff weren't able to be at the meeting, so we weren't able to get a report on uh, areas that were submitted for. Uh, requesting a review uh, at the January 4th meeting. We deferred this item for two meetings in order for council members to help uh, work with the planning department to limit the scope of work in looking at reviewing the Nashville Next General Plan. 
Uh, the Nashville Next General Plan was adopted in 2015, amended in 2017, and it, is all, it has never been the intent that it would set in perpetuity, but that it would be re uh, reviewed and amended as needed. And this bill just simply requests that uh, areas that have experienced significant growth and change be reviewed, um, and that would include all of the community input and engagement as it previously with other amendments, the planning department has always been uh, the leader in, in reviewing and, and updating amendments and they would continue to do that and community engagement has always been a part of it and that would continue as well. And I believe that uh, this um, opportunity will allow even more community engagement in the process and, and continuity in the land use policy across the city. So uh, for those reasons, we'll be deferring tonight for one meeting. Okay, so the motion is to defer one meeting. Yes. Properly seconded. Discussion, Council Member Withers, you recognize. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Just wanted to kind of reiterate some of the points that Council Member Gamble made. I know uh, I was present and I think several of us uh, sitting here uh, on the council today were, were all present during the adoption of Nashville Next in 2014 and 2015. Uh, that was a very extensive pro project to do countywide. I don't actually anticipate that we will be redoing all of Nashville Next countywide, uh, absent significant um, staffing increases uh, that would be would need to, to be required to have that happen. So, but also just want to put people uh, at ease a little bit. I know we had some a lot of emails expressing concern about this resolution. Really, this intent is just to take a little bit more of a a kind of a targeted look at some areas that might need a review. Any policy change always require involves a lot of community uh, engagement. So nothing's happening automatically. And in fact, if any areas are identified for a community plan change, there would then be uh, a significant amount of uh, community engagement about that. But uh, I wanted to express appreciation for the planning staff. I know they are so stretched thin anyway with all of our zoning requests. We've had some staff illnesses, but I know that uh, they've also been finishing up the uh, redistricting, starting on the capital improvements budget. Our planning staff were just working so hard and want, really wanted to recognize them uh, during this uh, deferral period, but give them uh, one more meeting. I uh, look forward to seeing the data that the staff can bring for us for our discussion next time. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member Withers. We're on a motion to defer uh, one meeting, the resolution. RS 2022 10 13 26. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. It's a deferral motion of one, uh, one meeting. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion is deferred. Uh, we're on item number 30, RS 2022 13 56. Uh, by Campbell, Council Members Gamble, Johnston, Allen, and others. It's a resolution appropriating $20 million in the American Rescue Plan Act from Fund 30216 to create a national small. Business Recovery Fund. Uh, Council Member Gamble, you recognized on your resolution. Thank you. The uh, COVID-19 Financial Oversight Committee uh, reviewed it, this request and recommended approval uh, of the request. I, I, I'm not sure if uh, Director, po oh yes, Director Pogue is here, so I'm gonna turn it over to him to kind of explain uh, what the uh, request would provide for the community. Thanks. All right, before we get to Mr. Pogue, let me just get the committee oh, report yes, in. Yes, committee uh, report. Council Member Sorry. Allen, uh, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, budget and Finance recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against with the proposed substitute. Yeah, with the substitute, that's right. All right, uh, so um, um, I'm, I'll go back to Council Member Gamble in just a minute, but Mr. Pogue, uh, you are recognized. Welcome to the Metro Council. I don't know if this is the first time you've had the uh, You've probably spoken to us before, but I'm recognizing you again. This is actually my first time. Okay. Well, welcome, and um, the floor is yours. Should I stand? Or? No, you can, you can sit there, because Mr. Jameson usually sits, so you can sit as well. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, good evening, Council Members. My name is Courtney Polk. I am the Director of Economic and Community Development for Metropolitan Nashville. I'm happy to be here. This is my first time presenting before you. Uh, before you is a resolution for a uh, $20 million small business recovery fund, which is really geared toward our small businesses here. Uh, we've heard a lot of information from them uh, by the assistance. And so from this, we have structured a program to really address their needs, uh, being that it's a $20 million program uh, broken out in three buckets. Um, the first bucket being a $9 million grant program uh, geared toward providing immediate capital 
to businesses really needing a boost from the two-year pandemic we're going through right now. The second bucket being a Niagara million dollar loan program under the Nashville Opportunity Fund program uh, being managed by Pathway Lending. And the third bucket was really key in the center for Nashville is providing the marketing and outreach and technical assistance for really helping out small businesses here in Nashville. I think we've heard from them over the past year about needing uh, technical assistance, uh, really getting the word out about the programs as you saw with the CARES program last year. We wanted to do a better job to make sure people knew about this program. So working with Pathway Lending, um, Mr. Jameson, um, Mary Jo Wiggins, to make sure we got the word out about this program and structure this program to make sure it's inclusive and equitable for all of Nashville small businesses. All right, thank you, Mr. Pogue. Um, I'm gonna go back to Council Member Gamble. Uh, she's on a resolution. Yes, move for approval. All right, you've got a substitute that oh, we need yes, to take um, on first. Yes, uh, substitute, I've asked uh, Ms. Uh, Council Member Allen to All explain right, so the substitute. Uh, Council Member Allen, do you want to handle the substitute or do you want uh, to go back to Council Member Gamble? It's okay, either way. I'm happy to move to the substitute. My understanding is it's, it's simply uh, housekeeping and oh. the administration table oh, can explain that. I have, a, I have an amendment on the next one that... Right. Thank you for clarifying that. All yes, right. this substitute is a housekeeping substitute, and Ms. Wiggins, I believe, is here and may want to speak uh, specifically about what the substitute does. All right, so let's get a motion. So you want to move the substitute? I do want to move the substitute. Substitute resolution on RS 2022-1356, properly seconded. Uh, Ms. Wiggins, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, the housekeeping substitute is really just a correction. It said the neighborhood opportunity fund, but the um, the capital lending program that the funds will go to is the Nashville opportunity fund. So it's just simply a, a typo that was in the original. So the substitute corrects that. Okay, uh, you've heard an explanation. Back to you, Council Member Gamble. I'd like to move the substitute. All right, so Council Member Gamble has moved the substitute again properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Substitute's adopted. You're on your resolution as substituted. Move as substituted. Councilmember Gamble has moved RS 2022-1356 as substituted. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the resolution as substitute say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Thank you. All right. We are on uh, item number 31, RS 2022-1357. Uh, this is by Cam Gamble, Johnston, Toombs, and others. Resolution appropriating $1.1 million in ARPA funds from Fund 30216 permit the Mayor's Office of Economic Com Community Development to create an inclusive, equitable economic development plan and policy, conduct a market value analysis, which promotes balance and, and strategic growth in Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County. Councilmember Gamble, you're recognized on that resolution. Committee reports, please. Uh, budget and Finance, Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. All right. Um, okay, back to you, Council Member Gamble. And I believe there is a substitute uh, for this one as well by Council Member Allen. All right, so. Um, Actually, it's an amendment. Yeah. It it's is amendment. a, it's a late amendment. So let's go ahead and get this one. Council Member Allen, I'm gonna recognize you. You recognize uh, on your late Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I have to ask for a suspension of the rules for a late filed amendment. Yes, you do. Did this show up in uh, rules committee? Yes, did I did go to rules committee. And, and Council Member Vircher, how did you treat this late filed amendment? They were kind. Vice Mayor, there were no objections and we took a vote, uh, six, four, zero against. Okay, on the late filed amendment. Okay, Council Member Allen, um, you're gonna to move to suspend the rules to get this one before us. This is a late filed amendment. It was sent to you by email this afternoon. Council member uh, Allen uh, would like to um, uh, move to suspend the rules to get this matter before us tonight. Any objections to suspension of the rules? Seeing none. Uh, rules are suspended. Councilmember Allen, you're on your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I'm so excited about uh, this bill in general, and Mr. Pogue may well have the opportunity to explain what this is. So I don't want to steal his thunder, but my amendment will simply add um, some specific language about community values while we're doing this economic development study so that um, within the policy that's developed, we can say, while we're doing our community engagement, we also ask the community, in addition to what kind of businesses do you want here, what is important to the community, like affordable housing, groceries in food deserts, and local jobs, and, and child care, the things that keep coming up as we talk about economic development. So all this simply does is just add some explicit language. I did 
uh, speak with Mr. Pogue about that. I think I've got his blessing uh, on, on the wording that is there, uh, and I really appreciate his uh, working back and forth with me, which is took us a day or two to get that, and that's why it's late filed, but I would ask for everyone's support on this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, Councilmember Allen is moving uh, <laughs> this late filed amendment to RS 2022-1357, properly seconded. Uh, discussion on the late filed amendment? Motion is to adopt. All those in favor of the late filed amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendments adopted. Councilmember Gamble, you are now on RS 2022-1357 as amended. Yes, I'd like to move for approval, but allow uh, Director Pogue to explain the bill. This also came before the COVID-19 Financial Oversight Committee and received a recommendation of support. And Mr. Pogue can explain exactly how it will help our uh, communities. Okay, so I've got uh, a motion to approve RS 2022-1357 by Council Member Gamble, properly seconded. Uh, Mr. Pogue, you are now recognized for the second time at this council meeting. Uh, good evening again. Um, before you is a resolution to support uh, $1.1 million to create our first plan for economic development, which will basically be in two buckets. One will be for the actual plan and policy, and the second component would be for the market value analysis. Uh, the reason why we should have an economic development plan and policy is really to make sure Nashville is competitive. Based upon our growth and housing, and job creation, we make sure all Nashville benefits from the growth taking place here. Uh, the market value analysis is a tool which allows you as council members to determine how we best utilize our limited resources that you allocate for housing, economic development, and other things to make sure we're focusing on the right areas with those assets and building Nashville up in a proper way where it's balanced and equitable for all of Nashvilleians. Thank you, Mr. Pogue. All right, we are on RS 2022-1357 as amended. Properly moved, properly seconded. Council Member Van Reese, you're recognized. Thank you very much. I just want to congratulate Mr. Pogue. This is exactly why you're here. Um, this um, project um, is something that's long overdue for a city uh, like Nashville, Tennessee. Um, the idea that we don't have it is, uh, quite frankly, a little embarrassing. And so I'm really, really glad that we're moving forward on this concept and that we have someone with such great expertise to be able to lead um, this. Uh, I also am extremely, um, um, really just hopeful um, that we finally have an opportunity to look at the city as a whole um, and to look at... Um, uh, areas like Southeast, like North, like Madison, like Bellevue, in ways in which uh, we're working as a whole. And uh, we can celebrate neighborhoods, but we need to grow economically uh, in as many diverse ways and as equitably as possible. And for all those reasons, um, I'm enthusiastic about this, and I appreciate the opportunity to say so. All right. Thank you, Council Member Van Rees. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm not sure if this is more appropriately a uh, question for the committee or the administration, but I'll, I'll ask it and we can see where it should be best directed. I, I think I echo uh, Council Member Van Reese's um, remarks overall. The biggest question I have is why we are relying on American Rescue Plan funds for this. Why is this not uh, a standard part of our budget process? Um, you know, and why did we wait until additional money was available to do this instead of committing to doing it uh, within the bounds of resources we have available. So I appreciate an answer from whichever party is most appropriate. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna recognize uh, Council Member Campbell. I'll answer from the committee's perspective. We saw this as, a, as an opportunity to <clears throat> complement the first resolution that we just passed, the $20 million in uh, support for the Nashville Small Business Recovery Fund. As it's been stated earlier, small businesses have been hit very hard by the pandemic, and this is an opportunity to offer support for them. And in looking at that, we also saw this as an opportunity to develop, do the research to develop an economic development plan for our city, which has been stated we do not have. In a city of our size, that is an embarrassment. And the ARC funds are... Um, it is, uh, uh, it, it, they qualify 
to use the funds in this way. And so we saw this an as an opportunity, as I said, to both support small businesses in Nashville and develop a, a business economic development plan for our city. And I'll let Ms. Wiggins add to that as far as the qualifications uh, for this uh, fitting into the ARP funding requirements. I think uh, we're going to recognize Mr. Jamison. I'm playing the role of Mrs. Wiggins tonight. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this is this does fit into the criteria set forth um, uh, for the ARP funds and in looking at our sister cities and the allocations of ARP funds in this instance we're following a model that others have roughly a million dollars dedicated to economic plans for inclusivity following similar recovery plans housing plans this does fit in neatly with what um, what peer cities are doing councilman O'Connell back to you Thanks. I guess just a quick follow-up would be from the standpoint of timing. Um, if we were to do this in uh, within our standard operating uh, budget timeline versus this allocation, uh, does the timing matter? Right? Does are we assuming that passing this resolution would allow us to move a few months ahead in terms of the actual work of creating the plan? Uh, Mr. James, that is indeed correct. So, with the budget submission not being uh, or process not being completed until uh, the end of June by charter, this does afford, among other things, the advantages of expediency. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. President. All right, thank you, Councilmember O'Connell, Councilmember Bradford. Oh, okay. Anybody else wishing to be heard on this one? All right, we are on RS 2022-1357 as amended. Uh, the motion is to approve. Again, it was properly seconded. Seeing nobody else in the queue, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of RS 2022, 1357 as amended. For passage, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, resolution passes. Thank you, Councilmember Gamble. Uh, we're on item number 33, RS 2022, 1359. Resolution to approve the First Amendment to a grant contract for constructing affordable housing approved by RS 2020. RS 202443 between the Metropolitan Government of National Dennis County Act by and through the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission and New Level Community Development Corporation. Councilmember Allen, uh, you recognized on the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, affordable housing, Councilmember Parker. Um, affordable housing considered the resolution. We voted f six in favor, zero against, and one member abstaining. Okay. Thank you. Uh, budget and Finance, uh, Councilman Allen, you got the other report. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Mayor, Budget and Finance recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against, and I move for approval. All right, so Council Member um, Allen has moved for approval of RS 2022-1359, properly seconded. Um, anybody in the queue? No, no one. Uh, So, um, on the board. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, we're going to, well, I think we have an abstention on this one. Um, so, uh, we're going to go on the board. Uh, Mr. Clark, uh, let me tell you where we are. <clears throat> uh, it's RS 2022 1359. Councilmember Allen has moved for uh, passage. It was properly seconded. We're getting ready to vote. Uh, because of the abstention, uh, we're going to go on the board. Um, Mr. Clark, uh, tell me when you're ready. Ready? All right. Uh, we're voting on RS 2022 1359 for passage. Um, Mr. Clark, open up the machines. Councilmember Vircher, you want to vote on this one? All right. Um, Mr. Clark, close the machines, take the vote.
Uh, ayes 32, uh, no zero, and two abstentions. All right, uh, so uh, the resolution passes. All right, thank you, Mr. Clark. All right, we are now on um, item 36. This is RS 2022-1362 by Johnson, Gamble, Allen, and others. Resolution appropriating $1,046,000 in ARPA funds from Fund 30216 to provide rent relief to vendors at the Nashville flea market. Uh, Council Member Johnston, uh, you are recognized. There you are. Thank you, Vice Mayor. This um, is a recommendation out of the COVID-19 Financial Oversight Committee to allocate monies for rent relief for the vendors of the flea market. It's a lot like what we did for the farmer's market, and we I think we allocated around a million dollars for that. I will say that um, only about $250,000 of the farmer's market was actually utilized. Um, and so um, I'm hoping that all of this money will be utilized by our vendors. Um, there are several vendors that have been with us for decades. Um, the, vent, the, uh, the flea market, I'm sorry, was decimated, um, had to completely come to a screeching halt because that's where we were housing some of our unhoused population during uh, the COVID-19 um, pandemic. And uh, it just, we are down to about 60% or so roughly of um, down from what we were as far as vendors. And so this is an incentive program to um, help people get back on their feet and to encourage other vendors to come and join um, uh, an institution that has been in Nashville, Nashville for over 50 years. So I would encourage everyone to um, support this resolution. Okay, let's get some committee reports. I got budget and finance, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance recommended approval, nine in favor, one against. Okay, public facilities, arts and culture, or Council Member Bradford. <laughs> Public facilities voted seven in favor, none against on RS-22-1362. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. Back to, uh, Councilmember Johnston has moved approval of this resolution for passage, properly seconded. All right. Uh, we're on the resolution. Uh, discussion on the resolution. Seeing none, we'll try this by voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Uh, resolution passes. All right, thank you, Councilman Johnston. Uh, we're on item number 39, RS 2022, 1365, by Council Members Allen and Evans. Resolution approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Nashville Nashville County and Axon Enterprise Inc. to provide taser cartridges and accessories for the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department. Council Member Allen, uh, you're recognized on your resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, I've got uh, Public Health and Safety, Council Member Evans. We heard this uh, resolution and voted in favor, uh, six in favor, four, uh, zero against. Okay. Uh, budget and finance has the other one. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance recommended approval, nine in favor, zero against, and I move approval. Okay. So, Council Member Allen has moved approval of uh, RS 2022 1365, properly second. Discussion on the resolution. Council Member Parker, you recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I just wanted to take a moment, you know, following. Uh, last week's killing of Landon Eastep. Um, I, I think I have some serious questions about use of force policies and, and, and how equipment such as this is, is utilized within the department. Um, and I wonder if it would be appropriate to uh, defer uh, approval of this contract until that investigation is complete and we understand better uh, what happened in that case. So, um uh, you're the one who um, I, I can't recognize recommend anything. It's up to you to. Can I make a motion with? Uh, you can make a motion if you'd like. Uh, I'll make a deferral motion of two meetings. Okay, so uh, Council Member um, Parker has moved to defer this two meetings. Yes. Properly seconded. All right, so uh, we're on a deferral motion. Discussion on the deferral motion. I've got a number of people on this, um, so I'll go through the list. But it's, we're on a deferral motion. Councilmember Welsh on the deferral. Councilmember Pulley on the deferral. Councilmember Pulley. Can I move to table the deferral motion? Uh, you can move to table the deferral motion. All right. So, um, and there's a second. So, um, <clears throat> motion to table may be debated only by the maker of the motion and one proponent of the ordinance or resolution involved. Um, 
If a motion is the table is directed at a motion, which this one is, it's a motion to defer. The motion to table may only be debated by the maker of the motion to table and the maker of the motion against which the table of the motion link is directed. So um, the maker of the motion to table is Council Member Pulley. Uh, maker of the motion against which the table of the motion is directed would be Council Member Parker. Um, I believe I've got that right. Okay. So um, Council Member um, Pulley, I'm going to go ahead and start with you. You're the maker of the motion to table. So uh, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, first, I think it's uh, uh, very premature to have discussions about what happened last week. Many council members have, and many community members have questions about what happened. Uh, there's an investigation ongoing, and uh, I think it's appropriate for us to allow that investigation to unfold and the facts to come before us. What this resolution is, is a uh, resolution to fund the police department with tools for de-escalation and it's potentially uh, uh, it, it is potential it has the potential to drag this out for another possible year before they can get these if we don't uh, uh, go ahead and approve this uh, resolution as it stands now but again I urge people to understand that taser cartridges are needed to replace tasers and taser cartridges are needed to replace outdated and some uh, defective equipment and it's vital to use as a de-escalation technique uh, that the police department be afforded this opportunity so i urge uh, us not to defer this and move forward with this resolution all right um councilman parker Thank you, Vice Mayor, and, and I appreciate my colleagues' comments. Um, you know, I, I think that when we look at these less lethal technologies, um, it's, it's easy to think of them as um, non-lethal, um, and they are, unfortunately, that is not the case. Um, there was an incident um, in, in my district, actually, um, maybe a year and a half ago, where a gentleman uh, died as a result of... of um, um, use of a taser device. Um, you know, with that being said, I, I don't really know the, uh, the status of, you know, are there tasers in, in MNPD's possession? How many are, you know, functional or adequate for, for use these days? But again, I have so many questions, and I think the general public has a lot of questions about use of force policy, how we utilize these less, less than lethal devices um, as a department. And I do think it's appropriate to wait for the investigation when we have an incident as significant and traumatic for a community as the killing of Lanton East Step. I think it is entirely appropriate to wait for the investigation to be completed and to have all the facts before us before we make a decision regarding this type of equipment. And uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Parker. So um, here's how this is <clears throat> working, and I'm going to turn on the microphone for our uh, legal counsel. So. Um, Council member, so let's go through the whole thing. Council member Parker has moved to defer two meetings. Uh, Council member Pulley moved that motion to the table. We're going to vote it on the motion to table. So if you're if you're for Council member Pulley's motion to table, you will vote aye when we open up the machine, uh, which means that if you want to, um, it would be cutting off the deferral motion. The motion to the table cuts off the deferral motion. Um, if you want to defer, then you would be voting against the tabling motion. Does that make sense? Everybody got that? We haven't had one of these in a while. All right, so let me explain that again because this is important. It's a motion to table. So uh, Councilmember Pulley is tabling the motion of Councilmember Parker. Councilmember Parker is asking to defer two meetings. Councilmember Pulley is, is tabling that motion, uh, cutting off that deferral motion. So. Um, again, if you want the deferral motion to stay alive, because <clears throat> we haven't voted on that, you'd vote against the tabling motion. If you're against the deferral motion, you'd vote aye, which is for the tabling motion. Everybody clear? Do I need to repeat it one more time? No. One more time. <clears throat> so this is important, so let's make sure we got this right. <clears throat> so. Um, Again, Council Member Parker is moving to defer this two meetings. Council Member Pulley, properly recognized, moved to that to the table. Okay, we're voting on the tabling motion of Council Member Pulley. So we'll be on the board. So if you 
If you want to vote with Councilmember Pooley, you'd vote aye on the motion to table, which will table the deferral motion. So if you, if you want to defer, then you would vote against the tabling motion. If you don't want to defer, then you'd vote for the tabling motion. Councilmember Allen? Yes. Procedural question. Then if, we, if the tabling motion fails, can we then go back to debating the, the motion to defer? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're, if the, uh, yeah. Yes. The, um, and it's, uh, we're checking, but it's by simple majority. This vote is by a simple majority, correct? Okay. So um, any other questions before we vote? We're, we're, we, how many people are here? I guess we'll find out in just a minute. We'll see on the board. <clears throat> All right. So again, uh, we are voting on the motion to table by Councilmember Pulley. Uh, if you're for the tabling motion, you, uh, if you're for what Councilmember Pulley is voting for or asking for, you'd vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. Uh, Mr. Clark? Mr. Clerk, open up the machines. It's a motion to table. Everybody in? All right. Mr. Clerk, close the machines. Take the vote. So uh, the motion to table prevails, 21-4, um, 15 against. Uh, we are uh, back on your resolution. So the, the motion to defer is tabled. So Councilmember Allen is back on her uh, resolution. Okay, Councilmember Allen, you're recognized. Sorry, I had too many things open over here. I get it. All right, Councilmember Allen, Mr. you're Mayor. recognized. I, I would like to move for approval again with uh, the, the request to make a question of the administration. All right, so Councilmember Allen has moved for approval of RS 2022-1365. Again, it was properly seconded. You're recognized. Thank you, and then my question was, we're not deferring, but, but one of the questions that would have come up had we been debating that was, um, is this a timely issue if we don't vote if we were to defer it for whatever reason, would that have had an effect on the ability to get this funding? Uh, Mr. Jameson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you, uh, Council Member Allen. Um, so the council may remember in January, we had supplemental allocations for various programs, one of which included um, tasers and the 6.5 allocation was approved. This is the contract that just uh, is in pursuit of that. Uh, throughout the end of last year, our finance department, uh, Ms. Flannery, Ms. Wiggins, negotiated with the vendor a, a price. Uh, they had anticipated that the contract would be executed uh, in January, and we indicated to them that that was not the council schedule. Uh, could they possibly give us until February 1st? But keeping the 2021 price schedule, they agreed to that if it was done by January 31st. We begged and pleaded for February 1st, one more day, and they agreed to that. So the, the concern is that there would be a pricing uh, differential um, uh, if, if not approved. During the supplemental budget allocation, the council members may remember that there was fairly thorough debate about the number of tasers that are implemented, the number that are now out of warranty, non-functioning, um, and, and the need for this at that time. Thank you, I appreciate having that context on that. I understand the sensitivity of this, and I, and I do think it's important for us to learn what goes on with this investigation, but I'm not sure these two things are as, as intertwined as would make it valuable, and I mean, worth spending more money on, on things when we can better put that money to other things that people care more about. So I would ask again for approval. All right, uh, now I'm gonna go back through the list. Uh, Council Member Welsh, we're on the resolution. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I would just request that all of my colleagues really, really think about what is going on right here. Every funding request by MNPD that comes through council gets approved without question. Every single one, and regardless, regardless of the performance of MNPD, every call for funding for different approaches to public safety, such as providing mental health services, providing social services, providing programs to alleviate poverty, 
falls on deaf ears. It needs to stop. I think the incident on 65 showed us that MNPD is using tasers when they shouldn't and not using them when they should. And we need to think long and hard about putting more and more of these harsh weapons that kill people when there's not policy and procedures and consequences when they are misused. Thank you. Council Member, uh, Council Member Benedict to recognize. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, the, uh, Mr. Jameson mentioned a couple of things in regards to uh, that I'm curious about, which is what will the six and a half million dollars replace? So it sounds like maybe this is something that was provided before. I couldn't quite tell from your comments, Mr. Jameson. However, I'd like to, if I'm, I, I know we tabled a two meeting deferral um, motion. I'm wondering if we could, if anybody would be open to a one meeting deferral in order to get information from the administration with regards to how many devices are there, um, how many taser cartridges are we getting for this, um, and what is the need, what are, we, what are we replacing? So I think, Mr. Jameson, you spoke to that right at the end of your last comment, but I don't know that we have that information. I'd love to see that. Is that feasible? Um, I don't know that we have that information. We'll, we'll check here if, we, if the conversation keeps going. We'll, uh, I'll confer with Ms. Wiggins to see what we have from the vendor on what the price escalation would be. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. And I understand that there's a, a time crunch with regards to the timing of this contract. I guess, Vice Mayor, pending that information, I don't know when I'm going to get that information, it sounds like. It might be in the next 30 minutes. It might be next week. I'd <laughs> like to move for a one meeting deferral. Yeah. All right, so uh, Councilmember Bennett, we're, we're double checking, but I think you can move for a one meeting deferral. We're, I'm looking, we're checking right now. Uh, why don't you, if you don't mind, give us one second and make sure, because we just had a motion to defer two meetings, which failed. Uh, so we're double checking to see if I, you can. Uh, there might be enough time for Mr. Rosenberg to sing Hail to the Victors. Um, I, I may be more willing to entertain a motion to defer than listen to that, okay? So um, hold on just a second. I'm sorry, I stole this time. Oh. That's my fault. But we'll find out. Councilmember Benedict. All right, so uh, Councilor. Uh, 
Vice Mayor, I, I th Hold on one second. Are we ready? Mr. Jameson? Uh, so, uh, Councilman Benedict, I'm going to go to you. I, uh, you are looking for an answer to a question. They may have it. I'm going to recognize Mr. Jameson. Okay. Thank you, Vice Mayor. In Exhibit A to the supplemental allocation of, uh, adopted by the Council in January, the itemization of full number of tasers was 1,400, 572 of which had already been removed from service, either being end of life or, or damaged. The the contract is broken out into uh, separate yearly segments, and the amount allocated for tasers for this coming year is $3.15 million. What we don't have for you is what is the vendor's escalated rate going to be if not if not adopted, and they go to the 22 price ranges. We don't, we don't have that in the exhibit. Council Mayor Benedict. Thank you, Vice Mayor, um, and thank you to the administration for that information. Um, um, I think, well, where I, uh, and I see the time's off, so thank you. That might be my only time, huh, getting that. But, I think um, we're forgetting I, to turn it on, but that's if, fine. <laughs> if we could move it to the, to the heel just because I would like to look at a one-meeting deferral still. Okay. Um, so I know you and I were just talking about potentially mm -hmm. moving this to the heel so that we can find out through the rules if a one meeting deferral would be allowed based on the two meeting deferral having been okay. so, successfully uh, tabled. So ladies and gentlemen, we're, what we're doing is um, it's a procedure we don't normally use here. We simply move this resolution to the bottom of the calendar. It's the, it would be placed at the bottom of the calendar. It gives our staff time. We're double checking to make sure we've got the Roberts rules correct. And so we would simply move this to the end of the calendar. Any objection to moving this in, in the calendar? Can Councilmember Suara is objecting. Councilmember uh, Council Suara. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I don't, I'm not objecting to moving it, but I would like to make my comments before we move it. Um, no, it has to, it, it, you'll, get, you'll be allowed to make comments at the end if we move it to the Hill, okay? Otherwise, we'll be debating something that we're moving to the Hill of the calendar because we, we don't know whether Councilmember uh, Benedict is wanting to make a motion to defer and we don't know whether that's an appropriate motion, okay? So, um, Vice Mayor, am I able to ask a question of the administration before a motion, or that's not proper? So, um, Councilmember Benedict wants to, has moved it to the hill of the calendar. Um, that's what I thought. You're next in line, I know, but um, um, the motion is to move it to the hill of the calendar. Uh, Councilmember Benedict, when I once I leave you, I don't think I can come back to you for a while. That's the problem. I mean, you'll get a chance to be heard on this, Councilmember Suara. It's just not now. We're just the the motion is to move it to the end of the the bottom of the calendar. And procedurally, Vice Mayor, is, can I alone move it to the hill, or does that take a vote? I was just going to do it without objection, okay. but I've got an objection, Councilmember no. Suara. Objection. No, so there are objections to moving it to the. Um, uh, so the motion is to move it to the hill of the calendar. We can vote on that. Uh, if that's the motion to move it to the hill of the calendar. If, if I don't have to do it as a motion, if I could just request that we move it to the hill, I'd rather just do that. Well, but, but I've got objections. Okay. So usually okay. I just right. bang the gavel and move it to the hill of the calendar, <laughs> but I've got objections. Okay. Well, now, I, now so, that objection is then gone. Then I make that motion. So the motion is to uh, move this resolution to the hill of the calendar, properly seconded. We'll take a, a procedural vote. Um, all in favor of just moving this to the end of the calendar so we can get some answers taken care of, say aye. Opposed, no. Oh, all right, so um, we're gonna vote on this. Uh, this is just a procedural motion. It's a motion to move it to the hill of the calendar uh, so we can I get some information draw. done. Can I withdraw my motion? Uh, yes, you can. Okay, thank, okay. thank so, you. Uh, Council Member Benedict is uh, withdrawing her motion. So, um, so you're not moving to the hill of the calendar and um, we, right now, we cannot give you an answer as whether you can actually make the other motion, okay? Okay, I, I might want, okay, thank you. Just letting you know. All right, Councilmember Suara, you're recognized on your, um, you're recognized on the resolution. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. Um, I do have a question for the administration. Uh, when this bill first came the first time, I uh, had some objections. But I also listen to the fact that uh, one of the reasons that could cause a problem is if we're using tasers that are old. Uh, also talk to the COB 
before making that vote, but it was also on the condition that the vendor agreed to engage the community and to have some community input. I sent them an email, told them this much. They agreed to do that. Uh, Mr. Jamison, I forward that email to you. And so uh, as that taking place, I'm not aware there was any community engagement showing more information. Uh, that was part of the things that, that I requested for. And so did that ever happen? I thought we'll do that before the contract comes back before us. Well, uh, council member, thank you for the question. Uh, I remember at the time the council for uh, the vendor, uh, Axon was in the room and, and texting that their company proudly engages in community outreach, participation and support. What I had understand, understood him to be saying is when they're engaged by contract. I did not understand him to be saying that before there's a contractual relationship that they, that they engage in that outreach. Okay, that was my understanding. And from the email that I had, he said there will be outreach. Now, there are, there, there are uh, arguments in support of having tasers that are better than what we have, that having no tasers could actually lead to more problem. But I want them to be able to show that and to provide more information. And I thought, we will get all of that done. They said they will engage the COB. That's my understanding that all of that would happen before we get the contract. And that doesn't seem to be happening. No, I think the intention from the vendor was that that is part of their contracted services, but they would not engage. If we, if we wound up not approving the contract with them, then um, I would not expect them to de deliver the service that is part of the contract. Then, um, then I'm, I'm eager to know if we can defy it for one minute or even defy it indefinitely because we need to have those questions answered. We need good tasers. We don't need bad tasers because there are more harm done with bad tasers. That I've already agreed on. I've already talked to the COB, but we need that community engagement to be able to answer any other questions. This is trust between government and the community, and we keep moving away from that community engagement, I think it's still important. People have questions, and I think those questions should still be answered. No, I, I agree. I, I, I just recall that the attorney seemed to be indicating that they engage in that outreach when and if the, the contract is approved. And I apologize for any misunderstanding. Yeah, but we would have put the money out before that. You see what I'm saying? I think it's better for us to have all the information before we do that. But anyway, I'm interested in that question because I would like them to, at least the response that they gave me, the email that they sent me, I would like them to live by that. Councilmember Sawara, um, so uh, as you were talking about the deferral motion, did you try to make a motion to defer? Yes, I'd like to make a motion okay. for an indefinite deferral. Okay, that you can do, okay? You cannot make a motion. We've, um, legal counsel has tried to figure this one out. You cannot make a motion, as Councilmember Benedict did, to um, a motion to defer one meeting. It's all, that's already been done through Robert's rules, okay? We're checking it. You can only, you can, you, uh, so the motion was made to a date certain. That failed. So the only thing that you can do based upon what legal counsel has found is a motion for an indefinite deferral. Okay? That is a proper motion. All right. Seconded, we're on a motion to deferral, uh, to defer indefinitely. Um, so uh, I've got a list of people who want to talk. Councilmember Hancock is next. Councilmember, we're just on the motion to defer indefinitely, not on the resolution. Okay? Do you want to be recognized? Oh, there you are. I'd like to table the motion, please. Okay. So, um, so again, it's the same thing. We're uh, going through this. Uh, it's a motion to table. Um, it's been properly seconded. So there'll be two people speaking on this. Uh, Councilmember Hancock goes first on her motion to table, and then Councilmember Sawara will be recognized uh, uh, in opposition. Councilmember Hancock, you're recognized. Thank you, President. I believe that a motion to indefinitely defer is the same as a motion to kill the bill. So if you want to kill the bill, then vote to do that. But I think we need to vote on this because the administration has the, the quotes in place. We need to get these tasers for the police department so that they can de-escalate. We are complaining about the fact that there isn't enough de-escalation, yet we want to stop them from having the tools that they can use for de-escalation de tactics. It's, it's ironic, it's controversial, and I think we just need to move forward. Thank you. All right, 
Thank you, Councilmember. Uh, Councilmember Sawara, as you're talking to Mr. Jamison, but you're recognized. Thank you. Um, when it comes to, to the issue of the tasers in committee and when it first came, I voted in support of it. I did a lot of research. I talk about all the research that are out there that are against tasers, but I also talk about research that says that tasers can be used to de-escalate and that if we have bad tasers, it's not good for us. But we also talk about the trust between the government and the community. It's not enough for us to just make a decision. We have to carry the people along, whether it's a good decision or we think it's a good decision. That was why I asked for the community engagement. Mr. Jemison said at the budget meeting that they will talk to them and they will do that. On the, on the floor, I did not get the answer, I forgot to ask. So I emailed the, the company myself. And I said, can you answer all these questions about the tasers? More importantly, what about the community engagement? They replied and they said they are willing to engage the community oversight, but I'm trying to look for the email specific, uh, and the community, because this is something that they do. I then forward the email to Mr. Jamie saying that this has been my communication with them. What I'm saying is this. I think we need to buy these tasers because we don't want them to use bad tasers that will lead to more agitation, that will lead to more accident. But I also believe that it's not something we should just do when our community do not understand this and they don't support it. So I think engaging the community is still crucial. We still have to have that information, and I think we should do that before we sign the contract. So I ask that you vote yes on the indefinite deferral and allow us to bring it back or whatever we need to do. I'm not even saying two, three meetings. I don't care. But I think we still need to engage the community. We cannot keep doing business like this and just making unilateral decisions without engaging the community. Thank you. So um, I will say, typically, we, we have tried to not let people applaud from the back. But since nobody usually listens to me on that, um, I'm allowing that to happen, OK? All right, so here's where we are. Um, we are uh, on Councilmember Hancock's motion to table. Um, Councilmember uh, Sawar has responded back. So we are going on the board. Um, so if you're for, uh, we've been through this before. I hope I don't have to repeat this again. Uh, if you're for Councilmember Hancock's tabling motion, then you would vote aye. If you're against it, which would allow the motion to defer indefinitely to uh, at least be discussed, uh, then you would vote against it. Everybody clear? It's the same thing we just did. Okay? The same thing we just did. So, um, any questions? Everybody clear? If you're for Councilmember Hancock that is trying to table her deferral motion, you vote aye. If you want Councilmember Suarez's deferral motion to be considered, you'd vote against it. Okay? Everybody clear? Mr. Clerk, open up the machines. Mr. Clark, close the machines, take the vote. Uh, ayes 22, noes 14, uh, the tabling motion prevails. So we are back on the resolution. Um, Council, Member, Council Member Nash, you're next. Council Member Nash. Call the question. Okay, the previous question has been called for. Um, we'll try this by voice vote. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. A previous question prevails. We're on the resolution. Um, we'll try this by voice vote first. We're voting on RS 2022-1365 for passage. Um, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Um, it's a resolution, so we go on the board. Okay, we're going on the board. Um, so um, all those in favor uh, of the resolution, you'll vote aye. Obviously, when the board opens, uh, if you're against it, you'll vote no. Mr. Clark. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. We're ready. Uh, open up the machines. You're voting on RS 2022-1365.
for passage. Everybody in? Councilmember Evans? Everybody? Okay. You ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, close machines, take the vote. Uh, eyes 24, nose 3, 9 abstentions. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the resolution passes 24 to 3 to 9. Uh, we are on um, that. Uh, that completes, um, I think, all the resolutions. We have three late filed resolutions. They are in your amendment packet. Okay. Uh, we'll take them one at a time. Uh, Councilmember Sepulveda, you are recognized. This is a resolution honoring the life of Hispanic community leader and journalist Eliad uh, Trevino. Councilmember Sepulveda, you're recognized on your late file resolution. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I need to move to suspend the rules. All right. So, um, Councilmember Sepulveda is going to have to move to suspend the rules because it's late filed. Councilmember uh, Vercher, this one. Hold on. Uh, this one came before Rules Committee, so I need, I believe, two reports from you. One was whether it was okay for late filed, and then on the resolution itself. Okay. No, Vice Mayor, it did not. No. It was not approved? It, it was not. It did not come before the Rules Committee. Okay. So, uh, Council Member Sepulveda, this one did not come before the Rules Committee. Yeah. So. Yes, Vice Mayor. I, I missed the Rules Committee, unfortunately, but I, I believe I could still move to suspend the rules. All right. So, I believe, uh, I'm checking with the Council, I believe you can move to suspend the rules. Um, not only because it's late file, but because you failed to go to the rules committee. So I believe that's right. Hold oh, up. they did vote on it. Council Member Pulley. Vice Mayor, I think we did not vote on the late nature of this, but I do believe we considered the resolution itself uh, at the end of the meeting. We didn't? All right, so hold on, we're just double checking, but I believe you can go ahead and move to suspend the rules anyway, we're just checking. I think you can do that. Okay, so Council Member Sepulveda, what your, what your motion would be, would be to suspend the rules, not only because it's late file, but because you did not go to the rules committee. Yes, okay. so. All right, so uh, Council Member Sepulveda has moved to suspend the rules. Second, uh, any objection to suspension of the rules to get this one before us tonight? No objections, rules are suspended, you're on your resolution. Thank you, and, okay. and I do apologize for it being uh, late filed. Uh, Luis Trevino died after the filing deadline, um, so that is the nature of why it is late filed. Um, this is just a resolution recognizing uh, Luis Trevino, who is a pillar in the Hispanic community, who created one of the first uh, Hispanic newspapers in the city. Um, he was a he was a big advocate for our community, and uh, we just want to make sure that we honor his life. Um, it, it's important that we go ahead and vote for this because we do plan on inviting the family, community members, and community leaders uh, to participate in a reading of this resolution in celebration of his life. So I would ask if anyone wants to sign on that you do so um, to present that to the family. All right. Um do you want everybody signing on who votes for the affirmative signing on? If that is what they want, yes. Okay, all right. All right, so the motion is to approve this resolution. Everybody who's, who votes in the affirmative is listed as a, as a sponsor. It's properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? Council Member Hurt, you recognize. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I just want to stand, too, in support of this. He was a pillar in the... 
uh, Hispanic community, but he was also a pillar in the black community because he came over to the community. He ran articles in his paper. He allowed us to be on his radio show, particularly for the organization for which I work, Streetworks. And he's been just a phenomenal friend. And the work that he did along with us has uh, increased our participation uh, by 266% in the Hispanic community. And I'm just grateful for all of the wonderful work that he did. And one of the last events that he attended of his life was our annual event. And I just want to say thank you and ask everyone to please support this resolution. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Hart. Uh, Councilmember Suara. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor of the resolution, and I would also like to ask if everyone that have voted in the affirmative can be added as a sponsor. Sounds like a plan. All right. Um, we're on the resolution. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Resolution passes. Thank you, Councilmember Sepulveda. We are now on a late file resolution honoring Shane Foster upon the retirement of his jersey from Vanderbilt University. That's Councilmember Cash. You recognize uh, move to suspend the rules, Mr. President. All right. Uh, Council Member Vircher, did this one come before rules? Yes, Mayor, it did. Uh, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Vice Mayor, it did. Um, there was no objections, and we voted 6 4 0 again. All right. Thank you. Council Member Cash, you recognized on your late file resolution. All right. Thanks. As you uh, oh, mentioned, hold on. This is hold on. You need to move to suspend the rules. Oh, I'm sorry. I moved to, you got moved to suspend you the rules. Okay, so Councilmember Cash has moved to suspend the rules to get this one heard. Any objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, rules are suspended. You're on your resolution. All right, thanks. As you mentioned, this is uh, to honor Shane Foster, uh, Vanderbilt, uh, a Vanderbilt basketball player from the aughts. Uh, I think graduated in 08. Uh, uh, their top point getter, their top three point um, shot getter. Uh, and they're, re they're retiring his jersey this Saturday, and uh, we just learned of it recently, and um, want to make sure that we do this before that uh, that event. All right, you've heard the resolution. Motion is to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion on Mr. Shane Foster? Councilmember Hurt, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. President. I would ask that all who vote in the affirmative be signed on to the resolution. All right. So um, I'll accept that one, too. So everybody voting in the affirmative on this one also will be added as a, as a sponsor. All right. Anybody else? We're voting on the resolution honoring Mr. Shane Foster. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, resolution is adopted. We have one more late filed. This is a resolution requesting the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to provide implicit bias training. To all employees, Councilmember Stiles, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to suspend the rules, please. All right. Uh, Councilmember Vircher, did this one come before Rules Committee? Yes, Vice Mayor, it did. There was no objections, and we voted 6 4 0 against. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Councilmember Stiles, we're going to move to suspend the rules. Yes, I'd like to move to suspend the rules, please. All right. Uh, any objection to suspension of the rules on this one? Seeing none, rules are suspended. You're on your resolution. Thank you very much, Vice Mayor. Um, as many of us may be aware, there was a racial discrimination case that was filed last summer within Metro Arts, and the findings from the investigation just came out a couple of weeks ago, and subsequently a new, a new uh, complaint was filed last week. There was also a press conference in regards to uh, the director uh, being present in that organization, so it's late filed because I wanted to make a statement in regards to Metro addressing the racial discrimination that's happening not only in Metro Arts, but quite frankly, in many of our departments. And so to call for an annual implicit bias training that would be in person for all Metro employees. And I'd like to ask anyone that votes in the affirmative to be added as well, please, sir. All right, so um, Council Member Stiles has moved for passage of the resolution properly seconded. She asked for everybody else to be signed on. Any objection to that? Seeing none. Um, so the resolution, so the, the motion is to pass the resolution. Councilmember Weathers, you're recognized. Uh, 
Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Vice Mayor. I, I think a main thing for me, I, I definitely support the intent of this, but uh, a main thing for me is a lot of times, uh, I think it's helpful to hear from uh, our, like our human resources or other departments, just again, to review like what, what kind of training is currently provided and to learn more about uh, what that rollout might look like for this training, which sounds very valuable, certainly. But just uh, a lot of times I, want to hear from the departments about requests that we're making of departments to provide a service to our employees since we do have so many employees so th that is my only kind of request is just uh, uh i don't know if we have to necessarily pass this tonight or if we could hear from the departments maybe at the next meeting that's my only request um so uh councilman withers let me go back to councilman styles it's a memorializing resolution uh councilman styles you're recognized Thank you very much, Vice Mayor, and thank you, Member Council Member Withers. So I did speak with Shannon Hall in regards to this, and she is supportive. It's a training that she has actually suggested that we do. Um, and in committee, it did come up in terms of a, a fiscal note. This would require having, if we're not doing it annually, one full-time employee. If we do it annually, it would be two full-time employees. So if that helps, hopefully. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Okay. Councilman Withers, anything? Okay. Uh, Anybody else want to be heard on the resolution? All right. Uh, seeing none, we are voting on RS. Uh, I'm sorry, RS 2022, and there's no number on this one. It's a it's the late file bias resolution by Councilmember Stiles. Uh, everybody voting in the affirmative be listed as a sponsor. Um, we're vote ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Resolution is adopted. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Allen abstains. I think we can just recognize them, okay, pursuant to, pursuant to the rules. Councilmember Allen be listed as abstaining. All right, uh, so we are now on bills on first reading. Uh, any bills uh, need to be considered separately on first reading? All right, we're going to take them uh, all together. Uh, is there a motion to adopt all bills on introduction first reading? I heard something that sounded like a motion, properly seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of um, bills on introduction first reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Um, all bills on introduction first reading are passed. I believe we have one late filed ordinance. Um, it is also in your packet. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, uh, you are recognized on a late filed bill. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Need to suspend the rules to have this one heard. And okay. I, guess, I don't know if I do that before I get the committee report. Let me, um, yeah, you need to suspend the rules first. Let me read the caption. It's an ordinance authorizing the acquisition of an interest in a parcel of real property and approving the grantee of an, uh, granting of an easement above and below the same parcel in connection with the development of a project. Look at 215 and 217 Third Avenue North. Um, Council Member Vercher, this one come before rules. Yes, Vice Mayor, it did. There was no objections, and we voted 6-4-0 again. All right. Thank you. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized for a suspension of the rules. Thank you, request. Mr. President. I'd like to move to suspend the rules, please. Okay. So Council Member O'Connell has moved to suspend the rules to get this one before us tonight so we can vote on it on first reading. Any objections to suspension? Seeing none, uh, rules are suspended. Council Member O'Connell, you're on your uh, late filed bill. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move for approval of the brief comment. All right, so Council Member O'Connell has moved for approval of this bill on first reading, properly seconded back to you. Thank you. Uh, we had a remarkable moment in the committee room earlier where um, we had three directors of the council office present uh, all doing different things. Um, and Mr. John Cooper addressed the uh, committee to explain the, the unusual circumstances here. This went through the traditional mandatory referral process, uh, putting in front of multiple Metro departments. Uh, there was a flag from Metro Water um, that slowed it down just enough that, it, I mean, ordinarily this would be timely filed, except that uh, the one of the structures in question uh, for the project is literally crumbling uh, and there is an urgent need to move ahead with uh, the, the improvements in the area that would uh, re basically restore this to a scenario of, uh, of public safety. So uh, I encourage colleagues to support and apologies for the late filing. It was mostly a metro procedural issue uh, combined with a structural safety issue. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. All right, so Councilmember O'Connell has moved uh, passage on first reading of this late filed bill, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on the, on the ordinance itself? 
Again, we're on first reading. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of this bill passing on first reading, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on first reading. Thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. All right, we're now ready for bills on second reading. Um, let me go through the consent calendar with you. We've got um, about 10 bills on the consent calendar. Uh, we are on item, um, these are items on the consent calendar. Uh, item number 74, BL 2021-897 is on consent. Uh, item number 78, BL 2022-1074 is on consent. 1075 on consent, 1076 on consent, 1077 on consent, 1078 on consent, 1079 on consent, 1080 on consent, 1081 on consent, and 1082 on consent. All right, anything need to be bumped off that calendar, Council? Council Councilman Murphy, what? You're moving a little too quickly. Um, can you give item numbers as you read the bill numbers? I would, I would yeah, I'll go, go back. a little slower. Okay, I'll go back. It's a little late tonight to go that fast. All right, sorry. Just trying to move along. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so here we go again. Item number 74, BL 2021-897 is on consent. Uh, item number 78, BL 2022-1074 is on consent. Uh, and actually, council member, everything else on second reading is on consent, but, but does that make sense? Okay, everybody good? All right, I was just going through them because they were all bunched together. All right, all right. So anything needs to be bumped off the calendar. Council member Bradford, you're uh, recognized. Uh, item 75, BL 2021-1014, is that on consent? Item number 75 is not on consent. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Council Member Sepulveda, you recognized. 897. Uh, that's item number 74, 897 is taken off consent. Okay. All right, anything else needs to be taken off consent? All right, I'm going to read the bills on consent. Here they are. Uh, item number 78, uh, Bill 2022-1074 by Council Member Allen. Um, ordinance approving amendment one to the contract uh, for deferred compensation services between Voya Retirement Insurance and Annuity Company and Voya Financial Partners, LLC, Metropolitan Government of National Davidson County, which extends the term of the contract. BL 2022-1075 by Taylor, Allen, and Withers. Ordinance authorized and director of public property or its designee to transfer to Hoosier Capital LP uh, with a quick claim deed, any remaining interest, Metropolitan Government of National and Davis County, have it an unnumbered alley and unnumbered strip of property. BL 2022-1076, O'Connell, Allen, and others. Ordinance approving a participation agreement between Metropolitan Government of National and Davis County through NDOT and the Multimodal Infrastructure and SP Church Project, LLC, for sidewalk repairs on Church Street. Uh, item 81, BL 2022-1077 by Council Members Toombs, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County to abandon a portion of easement rights for probably located at 503 West Trinity Lane, formerly Winstead Avenue, alley number 1039, and an unnumbered alley, BL 2022-1078. Withers, Young, and Sawara, that's item 82, an ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to adopt the revised flood insurance rate map to minimize dangers to life and property due to flooding, maintain eligibility for participation in the National Flood Insurance Program, Item 83, BL 2022-1079, Lee, Withers, and Young, an ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County to accept new public water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for probably located at 3631 Pinhook Road, also known as Hobson Park. BL 2022-1080, that's item 84. O'Connell, Withers, and Young, an ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County to ban existing sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, easements, and to accept a new sanitary sewer manhole, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements. Property located at 1207 McCavick Street, also known as Gold Union South Tower. BL 2022-1081, Cash Withers and others. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County to abandon an existing public sanitary sewer main, adjust sanitary sewer manholes, and accept new sanitary sewer main for property located at 2405 21st Avenue South, also known as the Blue Pearl Vet. And item number 86, BL 2022-1082, O'Connell Withers and Young. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing sanitary sewer and water mains. Sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements, relocate a fire hydrant assembly, except new sanitary sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, a fire hydrant assemblies, and easements. For two properties located at 801 12th Avenue North and 814th Avenue North, also known as Chartwell at Marathon Village. Uh, those are the items on second reading consent. Uh, anything need? Councilmember Sepulveda, is that from before? Okay. 
All right, anything else needs to be bumped off the consent? Okay, anything else? All right, those are the items on second reading consent. Let me get some um, uh, committee reports in here. Budget and Finance, Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval for BL 2022-1074, nine in favor, zero against. For BL 2022-1075, 10 in favor, zero against. And for BL 2022-1076, nine in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Councilmember Allen, Councilmember Hancock. You made it just in time. You're on uh, BL 2022-1074. Timing is everything. That's right. We voted now. It's a little bit of a change from before. I'm sorry. We voted six in favor, zero against. Still unanimous. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, Councilmember Withers, uh, Planning and Zoning. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning uh, met and considered BL 2022 1075, 1076, 1077, 1078, 1079, 1080, 1081, 1082, and we recommended approval of each of those nine in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, thank you. Councilmember Withers. Councilmember Young, you've got the last report. All right, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. BL 2022-1076-1077-1078-1079-1080-1081-1082 were all recommended for approval, not in favor, zero against, and I will move the consent agenda. Councilmember Young moves the consent agenda properly. Seconded any discussion on the consent agenda. Seeing none, all those in favor of the consent agenda on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Second reading consent calendar passes. All right, so we're going to go back and take up the bills on second reading that were not on consent. Um, <clears throat> first item is item number 73. It's on page 26 of your calendar. It's an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to ban the existing sanitary sewer mains, sewer manholes and easements, except new sanitary sewer main, sewer manholes and easements, properly located at 4005 Utah Avenue. Councilmember Murphy, you recognized on your bill. Thank you. Pursuant to the indefinite deferral rule that I've previously used, I'd like to defer this 30 days? 30, right? You can, uh, so a date certain, you want to move it to the first meeting in March? It had, I, play, I replaced it on the agenda, so I believe it needs to be deferred 30 days. It doesn't have to be, no, I don't think so. I just reinstated it. Yeah, it can. Uh, and it's been more than 90 days. You so. can defer it. One meeting. It's one meeting. Okay. Yeah, it's one Great. meeting. Then one meeting. Um, it's listed as going to planning and zoning, uh, but I don't know if planning and zoning took it up. Should not have. All right. So we're going to work through this. Planning and zoning, this is uh, 884. Did it get to you all? It did come to us, but we had it down that it was being deferred by rule. And so it is deferred by rule. It is deferred by rule. Yes. All right. So it's deferred by rule one meeting. So you yes. don't even have to make a motion. It's simply Correct. deferred by rule. It'll show up on the next calendar. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Next one is item 74, BL 2021 897 by Councilmember Sepulveda. Ordinance amend Title 17 um, by applying a contextual overlay district to various properties located east of Nolan's Hill Road uh, or Pike's, excuse me, zone R10, R15, R20, and RS10, 101.34 acres. Councilmember Sepulveda, you're recognized on your bill. Committee reports. Uh, this one got re referred back to you all, Councilmember Withers. Um, planning and zoning. It did, and we recommended approval nine in favor, zero against, zero okay. extensions. So this one got uh, approval nine to zero. Councilmember Sepulveda, you recognized on your bill. Thank you. I need to make a one meeting deferral with a brief explanation. Okay, so the motion is to defer one meeting, properly seconded back to you. Thank you. Um, I unfortunately wasn't able to make it to the planning meeting. My work just doesn't allow my schedule to line up sometimes. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving for a one meeting deferral. We're getting closer to figuring out what path to take that would allow all neighbors to be included. We have had three community meetings, but I wanna make sure that everyone who has input is able to speak on this. So for my constituents, I would just look out for a email uh, coming to you soon, um, probably by next council meeting with the procedure going forward. Okay. So uh, Council Member Sepulveda has moved to defer this one meeting. Again, properly seconded. Uh, any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, ready to vote. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this one is deferred one meeting. Next item is uh, Bill 
1014 by Council Member Sledge, Allen, and others, or an approving a lease agreement binding between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, uh, acting through the Board of Education and Cambridge College Prep. Uh, Council Member Sledge, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, I've got budget and finance. Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance recommended approval, nine in favor, zero against. All right, planning and zoning. Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning recommended approval, six in favor, three against, zero abstention. All right, Council Member Lee, education. There you are, education. Yes, sir, education voted to approve, five, four, and zero against. All right, uh, Council Member Sledge, recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move approval with a brief comment. Please. All right, so Council Member Sledge uh, moves approval of 2021-1014 on second reading properly, seconded back to you. Thank you, and, and appreciation to the Council for your patience on this. I know I deferred this a couple times. Um, MMPS and LEAD, um, who uh, runs Co Cameron College Prep, um, have been in discussions. I've been in discussions with them over the last couple of weeks, and I feel good about where those discussions are going. You'll recall from previous meetings, um, I've mentioned that Cameron College Prep is a zoned middle school through an agreement with MMPS and the Board of Education. So it is the zoned middle school for this area. Um, the main issue has been that it has um, the highest number of portables in the county. Um, LEAD and MMPS have been having very good discussions about the facility there and how they can be working toward moving um, students out of those portables and into the main campus um, in a facility that um, is uh, worthy of the students. And so I would ask, um, as those conversations continue, that we approve tonight and I will give an update on third reading. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right, thank you, Council Member Sledge. Again, the motion is to approve on second reading, properly seconded. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. I just wanted to um, thank the council member for the work that he's doing on this lease. As you all recall, we had two similar uh, charter school leases um, before us over the past couple of meetings. Uh, I am sure you are as shocked as I am that MMPS did not reach out to me uh, since the last meeting. And so uh, I would just like to reiterate that uh, it would be nice to hear from them from the que about the questions we have posed on leases like this. So I applaud the council member for his work on this and I will follow his lead, uh, but it would be nice for MMPS to uh, communicate with the council uh, on lease agreements and, and other things, spending spending money in general. Okay, thank you, Councilor Murphy. Anybody else wish to be heard on this? Okay. All right, we're ready to vote. Uh, this is uh, for passage of uh, Bill 2021-1014 on second reading. Uh, all those in favor of passage of the bill on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All right, so um, I've got one. Anybody else? Two. Uh, Welsh, Bradford. Anybody else? All right. All right. Um, the uh, bill passes on second reading. All right, next bill up is item number 76 by Council Member Van Rees, Withers, Young, and others. It's an ordinance to amend the geographic information street and alley center line layer for the Metropolitan Government of National Davidson County by renaming Woodrow Street between Gallatin Pike and the Peggy Street and Linda Lane intersection to David McMurray Way. It's Bill 2021-1025. Council Member Van Rees, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice Mayor. I will be uh, moving to withdraw this, but I'd like to make a, a brief explanation. Okay, do you want to just withdraw or do you want to move to withdraw? I would like to move to withdraw with a brief. Okay, all right, so. Well, um, no, I just want to withdraw. What's the difference? Tell me the difference. Uh, well, the difference is if you move, we're going to vote on it. If you okay, withdraw, I, then you don't have to do it. I will it. withdraw and, uh, and explain myself. But I will uh, go ahead and get an explanation. There you All go. All right. Thank you very much. Um, council members, you may or may not have noticed in your um, uh, packet uh, when we passed uh, items on first reading, uh, the BL 20221092. That is the replacement bill uh, for this. Um, I am pleased to let you know that the uh, Honorary David McMurray Way will coexist with Woodruff Way uh, under that uh, new legislation. If you're interested in co-signing it, it'll be on second reading next meeting. Uh, I met with the David McMurray Memorial Committee. Uh, they had reached out to property owners on Woodruff to assist uh, with any incidental costs associated with renaming the street. Uh, there was a large number of council members ready to proceed with my request tonight to rename the street. Uh, however, after a thoughtful review of the documentation from the Metro Historic Commission, I have resolved along with the Memorial Committee 
that David would not want us to accidentally erase Madison's history, but rather amplify its future. Um, so with that, I have uh, communicated with the Emergency Communications District Board uh, that I would be withdrawing this so they did not uh, meet on it. And I'm replacing uh, that this bill with new legislation. And uh, I appreciate uh, your patience with this. I appreciate uh, the work of the community, uh, that of my uh, neighbors, uh, both uh, Council Member Hancock and Benedict up in the Madison area. Um, and that of the uh, both the minority caucus and the LGBTQ caucus on honoring this incredible man. Uh, and with that, I withdraw this bill and look for your support of the new one. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member Van Rees. The bill is withdrawn. Um, last one up on second reading is Bill 2021-1049 by Toombs and Van Rees. Ordinance to amend section 5.04.070 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws relative to the audit requirements for nonprofit organizations re receiving appropriations from the Metropolitan Government. Um, Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Uh, Budget and Finance, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval as substituted, nine in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Council Member Toombs. Uh, thank you. There is a proposed substitute. I'd like to move approval and turn it over to Councilwoman Suara. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman Suara on the substitute ordinance. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I want to thank Councilmember Toombs, Van Rees, and uh, the Finance Department and the Mayor's Office for helping me walk through this. Uh, the request for audit for non for profit has been changing over the years. Right now, the federal requirement is that you have to spend 750000 before you have to do an audit. And then with the state of Tennessee, with charitable solicitation, you have to do an audit if you spend more than 500000 if you have receipts of 500000 or more. Our ordinance still have our code still have 5,000. And so what COVID has taught us is that if we really want to reach all of our communities and we want to go into the neighborhood, we need to be able to use small organization to be able to do that reach. So what this substitute is proposed to do is to change the threshold for the audit requirement, but we also realize that we want some level of accountability so that it doesn't look as if we're just giving away the money. So rather than requesting an audit for $5,000, now the request will be an audit for $50,000. But what it also does is that it allows us to also have additional threshold. So if you have uh, from zero to $5,000, all you will have to submit is your financial statement made by your bookkeeper. If you have between 5,000 and 25,000, it's requesting you to have a compilation report by uh, a CPA. If you have from 25,000 to 50,000, you will do a review. The idea is that the cost of audit is very expensive. Uh, an audit can go up to $20,000. So if someone is getting $25,000 from Metro, there's no incentive to go out and get an audit for $20,000 because it removes or takes away from the money that is supposed to actually go back into the community. So recognizing that, this substitute now is now changing the code to increase the threshold for the audit, but also allow some accountability for anyone that gets money from Metro. Uh, it also had a section that says that no matter what the requirement is, the Department of Finance also has the authority to ask for any additional information. So individuals that are submitting their financial statement can also be asked to submit receipts so that we can make sure that there's proper accountability and steward over Metro funds. Um, so with that, I want to um, request <laughs> uh, approval of the, of the substitute. And like I said, I did talk to finance department and the mayor's office in agreeing with this threshold. Personally, I think the threshold is still a little too low, but I think it's a good place to start. All right, so Council Member Sawar has moved for the substitute to pass. Properly seconded. Council Member Evans on the substitute. Okay, Council Member Evans, you're recognized on the substitute. It's substitute related. It's a, okay. really a question for Mr. Bunton kind of related to the substitute, so I don't know if that's appropriate. Uh, who's, it, uh, who's the question for? Mr. Bunton. Where is it? John Bunton. Oh, oh, there he is. I didn't see him. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, Mr. Bunton, you're recognized. I just wanted to um, see if, if the changes align with the Cure Violence grants and the application process. Mr. Bunton, you're recognized. Um, so these changes uh, were uh, recommendation. They follow recommendations from the Center for Nonprofit Management. We worked very closely with Councilmember Suara and with the Finance Department uh, on uh, these alterations. Um, 
we would, this would be of great assistance to nonprofits applying for the um, Community Safety Partnership Fund. Um, the Cure Violence uh, application process will be looking at much larger grants. Um, so the expectation would be given the size of those grants, we would be uh, looking to make them to organizations where an audit would be required. Thank you, that's all I needed. All right, thank you, Council Member. Um, thank you, Council, uh, Mr. Button. All right, um, that takes care of the queue. We're on, Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. I don't know if this is for uh, Mr. Button or, or the administration. Did, and it may have been asked, uh, did we make sure that this won't have impact um, our bond rating and also our accreditation for our, for our finance department as well? Or is that an OMB question? We're good? Okay. Okay, just for the record, uh, Ms. Wiggins said no. No impact. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Virtue. Anybody else? All right, we're on uh, Councilmember Suarez's uh, motion to approve her substitute um, on BL 2021-1049. Uh, it was properly seconded. We're voting. All those in favor of the uh, substitute say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Substitutes have passed. We're back now on Councilmember Toombs, your um, um, ordinance as substituted. Move for approval as substituted. All right, so Councilmember Toombs has moved for approval as substituted, properly seconded by Councilmember Sawara. Um, discussion on this bill as substituted. Seeing none, all those in favor of the bill as substituted say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on second reading. All right, that completes everything on second reading. All right, so we only had one bill on the consent calendar for third, so we're just gonna leave it alone and we'll just get to it. Um, all right, um, bills on third reading. First one up is item number 87. It's bill 2021-621 by Council Member Murphy, Allen, and others. Ordinance amending section 17.40.720, 17.40.730 of the Metropolitan Code. Require additional public notice regarding applications for permits from the Historic Zoning Commission. Councilor Murphy, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you. I'd like to defer um, to the uh, second meeting in March after a brief explanation. All right, let's get committee reports in planning and zoning. Councilmember Withers. Planning and zoning met and uh, recommended uh, in favor of the deferral, none in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. Okay. Councilmember Murphy, again, tell me you're moving to the second meeting in. March. March, okay. So I'm gonna hold a, uh, another uh, virtual meeting on this on March 3rd. And uh, in my letter to the council yesterday and to uh, the planning committee, I, I wanted to thank the council members who have actually provided feedback on this legislation that I've been working on for over a year um, and request that the other council members who requested deferrals in favor of giving me feedback, but yet have not given any feedback to please do so by March 3rd, uh, because I think this is legislation that is desperately needed for more transparency and notice in our neighborhoods, in our uh, overlay districts and things like that. So again, please, if you have feedback, send it in through the council office or, or, or be productive. Please, please stop holding back this process by asking for deferrals and then not providing feedback. So I'd like to thank those of you who have done that. And I did that in the letter yesterday and I will get off my soapbox now, uh, renew my motion. All right, so Council Member uh, Murphy has moved to uh, defer this to the second meeting in March, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion, uh, this uh, bill is deferred to the second meeting in March. Uh, next bill up is item N number 88. It's bill 2021-961 by council members Johnson, Pulley, Nash, and others. Ordinance amending section 13.08.080 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws uh, pertaining to the use of license plate scanner technology in the public rights of way. Council member Johnston, you're recognized on the bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, it has taken us 14 very long months to get here. We have had hours of conversations, collaboration, multiple amendments. 
all culminating in a thoughtful, restrictive policy that would allow for a six-month pilot, a pilot program to see if this tool is as effective in Davidson County as it has been, it has, is, as it has been proven to be in our surrounding counties throughout the state and throughout the country. Crime, I think we can all agree, is not getting better. Our neighbors are being terrorized by gun violence, violent crime, drug activity. Over 3,000 vehicles were stolen just last year alone. It's incumbent on us to at least try to see if this tool can help curb this, curb this activity and help our neighbor, neighbors and our communities be safe. You have on your desk a letter from Chief Drake addressing some concerns related to sharing with ICE and expressing how important this tool will be to public safety in Davidson County. You also have a letter with a cover letter from, um, from Mr. Dietz in Metro Legal that is in response to the concern, uh, concerns brought forth from Councilman Mendez regarding, regarding the legislation itself. I think when you read through that, that any concerns, concerns stemming from that have been addressed. Um, Mr. Jameson, uh, can you or someone from Metro Legal uh, answer if they see anything in 961 that would cause concern, confusion, or litigation? Do you have the, Mr. Uh, Jameson, at some point we'll need a motion on the bill, but oh, I'll go I'm ahead sorry. And, that's okay. Uh, Mr. Jameson. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Council Member. Um, so the, you, you mentioned the letter from Mr. Dietz who indicated that um, he would need um, additional time for a thorough review. Uh, upon an initial review, uh, a cursory review, um, he did note um, some uh, drafting uh, inconsistencies. His initial impression was, however, that he did not observe anything that would impose a legal liability um, upon Metro. Thank you so much. Again, we have debated this for 14 months. It's our job, our duty, our responsibility to at least try to utilize a tool that has been proven elsewhere to make us safer. Oh. I hope that my colleagues will vote yes and I move approval. All right, so uh, Council Member um, uh, Johnston has moved approval. It's properly seconded. So. Um, so apparently, uh, at least five of you were in the queue and then the computer disappeared. So um, I've got, um, I, I was writing them down um, and I think there was one I missed and I think it was Council Member Nash. Were you in that first group? Okay, but I don't know where you were. <laughs> so Rosenberg, um, so here's what I had. I had Rosenberg, Young, O'Connell, uh, Nash must have been there, and then Stiles had raised her hand. Uh, those were the first five, and then the, well, so I, I didn't see the first five. I just saw five names, and then the, comp and the system crashed. So I'm going to take your word for it. So Lee, you were in the first group. Sepulveda, you were in the first group. Uh, Benedict, I've got you uh, in that group. I've got Swope in there. So I'm, I'm trying to be careful. Um, so I'm gonna tell you how this worked, okay? I was writing them down and then the system crashed. Um, so, yeah, maybe the system, okay. So here's, here's the list, all right? I had Mendes on there twice. Um, so uh, Council Member Rosenberg is next. Council Member Young is after that. Council Member O'Connell, Council Member Nash, Council Member Stiles, Council Member Sepulveda, Council Member Lee, then Council Member Benedict, Council Member Mendez, Council Member Swope, Pulley, Gamble, Vircher, and Hurt. Okay, um, we may want to check this thing. The whole board. All right, and then Hancock after Hurt. It just, it just crashed. That's not how it was. Okay. All right. So I've got everybody on there, um, and we'll just go through the list. I'm going to go through the names again. Rosenberg is first. 
Young, O'Connell, Nash, Stiles, Sepulveda, Lee, Benedict, Mendez, Swope, Pulley, Gamble, Virtue, Hurt, and Hancock. Okay. So I just I didn't see you. So if you were on there first, um, I did trust Sepulveda and Lee. So you're saying you got on there first with that group? I just couldn't tell because it crashed before it did it. So uh, Councilmember Hancock, I'm putting you after Lee based upon I'm, tr I'm trusting everybody to tell me where they were. Okay, because I I know. Th I'm putting you after Lee. Okay. But you're right there, okay? All right, you ready? Everybody good? Councilmember Rosenberg, you're recognized uh, on the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. I think that crash is an omen. Um, so I, I know that many of you have concerns with, with this bill, um, but are also eager to either try LPRs or are feeling pressure to support legislation that would allow them. Um, Given these facts and fatal flaws in 961, I've offered a schedule for consideration and passage of 841 should 961 fail. That will ensure passage within 42 days. That bill is on second reading, which means it is amendable. We have the foundation for a bill. We have a proposed substitute from Council Member Allen to work from, and we have an opportunity to amend it to a place that balances competing concerns, passes legal muster, and we can do it just 42 days from now. The bill before us will require a parade of cleanup bills. It's rightfully opposed by every single community group that operates anywhere near this space. And it's incredibly difficult to understand with its conflicting sections. And being free of legal liability does not mean that the language is of sufficient quality for major legislation. Additionally, we've been told that the pilot will not even reflect the way that the program will be used after the pilot program, which makes it not particularly useful. We have the opportunity to pass a responsible bill with the forms, uses, and retention that we can live with. We can stand up and do the right thing. Whether you're for LPRs or against them, it's our job to pass responsible, clear, concise legislation. This bill is a mess. This is, this is not the bill to pass. Please vote no on the bill and let's get it right. Thank you. All right. Uh, next person is uh, Council Member Young. Council Member Young is recognized. Previous question. All right. So Council Member Young has called the previous question. Um, we'll do this by voice vote. We'll probably have to take a vote. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed no. No. It's pretty close, but I'm going to go on the board. Um, so if, um, if people in the audience are yelling, that's inappropriate, okay? You cannot, you're not allowed to vote, okay? Well, I'm being told by council members that you're voting. Do not, you cannot do that, okay? I'm just telling you that's not acceptable. All right, so uh, uh, we're on the board. We're going to have to go on the board anyway, but please do not do that. That makes it very difficult. Um, so uh, we are on the previous question. It takes two-thirds vote. Um, so we're voting on the previous question. If you want to go ahead and vote right now, you'll vote aye. If you don't want to vote, you'll vote no. Mr. Clerk, open up the machines. All right, uh, all votes are in. Um, Mr. Clark, close the machine, take the vote. Takes two thirds. All right, there are 20, uh, 20 ayes and 17 noes. I th yeah, there it is. Uh, ayes 20, no 17, uh, previous question fails. All right. So uh, we go up next. Uh, Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized on the bill. <laughs> Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, 
Nashville does not need license plate readers to be a great city. We have heard from Conexion Americas, the Tennessee Immigrant and Refugee Rights Coalition, the American Civil Liberties Union of Tennessee, the NAACP Nashville branch, Walk Bike Nashville, and many other community organizations. Not to mention the opposition we've seen from across the city, across almost every council district and geography. Passing BL 2021-961 is a watershed moment for Nashville that indicates we've become so untrusting of one another that it's imperative that we routinely photograph each other's cars no matter where we go or why. We've demonstrated repeatedly over the past few years that we can allocate resources to any of a variety of community safety initiatives from literal tools for law enforcement to violence interruption to better lighting. We can invest in authentic community safety in so many ways that don't put privacy so at risk, in so many ways that don't create such concern among our communities of color. Smaller communities that want this technology can already get it. For those in this room who want to find a pathway for a better bill with broader support, Councilmember Rosenberg just offered that. There is a difference between looking out for one another and watching one another. I hope tonight we'll prefer to do the former by defeating BL 2021-961. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Council Member Nash, you're recognized. We have heard so much about uh, police department gets everything that they ask for. And, and then and we just had uh, Councilman O'Connell list a number of the items that we have spent money on for social uh, outreach, for mental health, spent $40 million here just recently on the Barnes Fund. So I, I'd like to maybe take that part of the, this discussion off the table. Um, as I stated at our last meeting, uh, this is like technology whose time has come. It's, uh, we wouldn't be here debating the use of fingerprints and I'm sure when that first arrived, there was lots of discussion about that. We wouldn't be debating uh, uh, DNA usage. These are unbiased technologies that can uh, find folks, exonerate folks as easily as convict them. Um, this is, uh, this is, you know, it, I when I was, one of the discussions I had, had when I was police commander at East, uh, um, I was there was a lot of tension about uh, how many traffic stops we had to make, and I and I, quite frankly I, I I differed with the chief at the time, thinking enough enough is enough, because random stops get you those random results. These license plate readers will give you definitive plates to be of interest in and to stop. It, it's not random. It's very data driven. So I, I know that uh, I, there's just been a lot of misinformation put out there also about the implications this has on communities of color. I think our chief of police has, was raised in communities of color. He's a, he's a man of color. He was raised, he was not raised in, in, in a privileged- Council Member Nash, hold on. So. I've allowed you all to clap in the back, but don't interrupt people who are speaking, okay? Considered very inappropriate. Councilmember Nash, you're recognized. Uh, Chief Drake was certainly not raised in, in, in a community of privilege. Um, and I think we need to, to give him some credit and, and, and defer to him. And I know uh, Councilman Mendez raised a number of questions, but there's a letter here from, uh, that was where uh, Commander Gilder kind of responded to those and I thought was good at uh, uh, negating some of these, those concerns in, in, that Council Mendez has raised. So I, I hope you'll support this. It's been a long discussion. All right, thank you, Council Member Nash. Council Member Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Vice Mayor. Um, I, I think we recognize that we have been speaking about this particular tool actually for 15 months since the first bill came up in October of 2020. A lot of great work has been done in terms of research, the, the errors that can possibly happen with this equipment, they are small. The flaws that people are concerned with are about the rules that were not put in place in other cities. They got the equipment, they did whatever they wanted with it. We have taken a lot of time to put parameters in place to 
lay out exactly what we will use this equipment for and what we won't. Providing an audit log, a physical audit log, making sure that the COB has access to the audit log. We are trying to work with the community and I think the amount of misinformation that is out there has been very frustrating. But the work has been done and this bill is ready to move forward and this city does need license plate readers. Again, I will reference Ernest Harris that I mentioned at the last meeting. Without the picture of the license plate, they would not have caught the individual who shot him. So we have the data to prove this tool does work. So I encourage you all to please vote yes tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Sepulveda, you're next. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Open Table Nashville, DSA, Oversight Now, Black Nashville Assembly, Surge Nashville, COB, Public Defender's Office, NAACP, Walk Back Nashville, ACLU, Conexion Americas, Turk, American Muslim Advisory Council, American Pacific Islanders of Middle Tennessee, Casa de la Cultura, movements including X, Workers' Dignity, and maybe I missed some. These are all groups who have come out against LPRs and have voiced concerns. I wanna, I wanna focus specifically on how this would impact black and brown people. ICE has access to data provided by LPR companies. Homeland Security had a contract with Vigilant Solutions. Even if they did not have a contract, there is nothing that prevents them from subpoenaing the records. I want to state for the record that it is completely irresponsible for MMPD and INDA to state that they would not share data with ICE. If ICE subpoenas records, there is nothing they can do to prevent ICE from obtaining that data. I am very disappointed that something so blatantly untrue and unpreventable would be stated. Colleagues, look at your emails. Look at the flood of people who have concerns with this technology. Look at this room. Look at the number of people that came today. The people voicing concerns and those who are present, those are the faces behind this legislation. Those are the people who will be affected even if it is a six month pilot. Those are the people watching your vote. There are people behind these emails, calls, and calls for no votes. There are people who might be separated from their families. There are people who might be wrongly stopped and put on the ground because that has happened in other cities. It has affected black and brown people. This is life and death for many communities of color. This is not just six month pilot. This is their life and we cannot afford to play with it. So I will end with how I started when this, first, when this conversation first came up with the quote from a Sam Seaborn with one word change. It is not about LPRs. It is about the next 20 years. In the 20s and 30s, it was the role of government. In the 50s and 60s, it was civil rights. The next two decades are going to be privacy. I'm talking about the internet, I'm talking about cell phones, I'm talking about health records and who's gay and who's not. And moreover, in a country born on the will to be free, what could be more fundamental than this? I ask you to vote no. All right, uh, Council Member, <laughs> Council Member Lee, you're recognized. Council Member Lee. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been thinking long and hard about this legislation. We have been working on it a while, um, and I have been talking to people. It is not something that I am going into uh, likely, but I will tell you, if we are voting on this particular one tonight, I will have to abstain. Um, I have constituents in my neighborhood that are for it. I have constituents that are against it. I have constituents that stop as I am in the early morning walking my dog outside saying, don't vote for this, it will hurt us. Not only have I just talked to my constituents, but I want you to know that I have asked questions about this. I too have talked to Captain Drake uh, and uh, have talked to the commissioners and police in my neighborhood and know that they are looking for something. They are looking for something to help them. Um, I have even talked to a mayor in one of the uh, West Tennessee um, areas that, that they use this. Um, 
And so I can see where something like this could be useful and may come, but the way that this bill is drafted, it doesn't have enough restraints around it. It doesn't have, um, it doesn't have enough rules to follow. It leaves it too very open. Now, I have also talked uh, about the, legislator, the legislation that was coming up. I will tell you, as I told the sponsor, that uh, the way it is right now, I am against it because there's some, a lot of pieces in that that I don't like. But he has already admitted that it's going to be open for us to look at and put some more restrictions around it and change some things and amend it. And I think with that piece, that is something that we can um, work with together and look at something uh, that we can draft that will be good uh, for us as a city. If I tell the truth, I don't know if it will at all be tr good for us as a city because there are so many cities in Tennessee that have different ones. Why isn't there something here that says um, statewide, this, this is how it's going to look? You go into one city and you take a picture of your stuff and they're holding it to, to, to these restrictions and then you come back in another one and it's just something else. It's, it's too all over the board. So I think what, with what we have now, um, if I have to vote on this, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, abstain. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Councilor Mayor Hancock, you're recognized. I'd like to call the question, please. Okay. All right. So, um, um, again, previous question has been called. Uh, we'll talk by voice vote again. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. All right. We're on the board. Um, we're voting on the previous question. We're not voting on the bill. We're just voting on the previous question. Uh, if you're ready to vote, you'd vote aye. If you are, want to keep talking, then you'd vote no. Mr. Clark, open up the machines. Just on the previous question. Okay, all votes are in. Uh, close machines, take the vote. Uh, so eyes 22, nose 15, uh, previous question fails. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so we're uh, next up is Councilmember Benedict. You're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So a few minutes ago, we heard the administration after a cursory review of this legislation, Director Dietz found, quote, drafting inconsistencies. When my amendment regarding signage placement at each mounted camera passed in the last meeting, the administration came to me immediately to clear up a question, this is important, about my intent. Specifically that the amendment as passed could be read to require a sign at the site of every camera, including at parking meters. Immediately on the floor when asked, I clarified that night that putting a sign at every camera was not my intent. This needs to be very clear, however. The administration wants, wanted me to legislatively clarify my intent, and they wanted me to do that tonight before the bill becomes law. Yet they're supporting a bill after a cursory review to proceed even with drafting inconsistencies. Council Member Mendez submitted detailed questions to gain clarification on many parts of the bill, and we received answers to these questions this afternoon from the police department, which responded to many of the questions with language to the effect of, quote, this provision isn't intended to set forth, and quote, it isn't meant to, and even, quote, if the descriptions are deemed insufficient during the pilot period, appropriate revisions can be made. But I needed to make mine tonight. So I believe what I'm hearing from the administration, uh, that we're trying to understand which way should it be. First, they say that I should try to clear up the intent of one amendment, but at the same time, they're okay with codifying a bill that has many more issues with language versus intent. 
Again, this was documented today by the police department that some of the language is opaque and doesn't clearly align with MNPD's intent. We've dragged this out for over a year now, as we've already said tonight and heard tonight, and we still have a bill that needs work. The sponsor indicated in a special meeting just a couple of weeks ago that she wouldn't entertain any further changes. That means that if this bill passes, what this body would codify tonight will not be good law. It will be confusing to our departments, to the administration, and most importantly, it will be confusing to the public. Yet this is only one reason why I cannot support this bill. The broad power that will be given without enough safeguards in place to protect the public is not something that the public has indicated that they want. They've been clear that they want reform. This isn't it. I encourage my colleagues to join me in opposition to this bill. Thank you. All right, uh, Council Member, Council Member Mendez, you recognize. Thanks, Vice Mayor. Um, but I had some comments thought out and I'm um, uh, tossing away, so hopefully this makes sense. Um, in, in my six years in office, I've, I've found that uh, if I'm making um, legal arguments, I'm usually losing um, because once people have made up their minds, um, frankly, a lot of folks don't care about the legal stuff. So I'm, I'm not going to get into the memo that um, I put out other than to say, if Metro Legal thought that my 20-some comments were BS, they would have found a, t a way to say so, because we know the mayor's office has leaned in super hard on this in the last 72 hours. And instead, the only comment we've got is a characterization of what they preliminary maybe feel um, to say that we're not going to get sued. Um, of course, like I never argued we were going to get sued. Um, I leave that for your consideration. I'm pretty sure that the comments in the memo are right, and we would have heard about it if it was otherwise. Um, and more on, on the the real merits, you know, the, the, the claim that there's a lot of misinformation going around is so disappointing um, because it, it fundamentally says that the 15 organizations that Council Member Sepulveda mentioned are um, not sophisticated enough to figure this out on their own, um, that, that, that they don't get it. Um, that they're, you know, not smart enough, not learned enough to figure it out, and thank God we're here to um, tell them what information is correct. We should we should trust the organizations that we've seen come up. Are we really going to pass a new policing measure that has the Public Defender's Office and the Community Oversight Board and the ACLU, and I'm not going to list them all again. Are we really going to pass something that they all oppose? And the, the other argument that, that really just... Um, uh, just hurt, makes my stomach hurt is the idea that, hey man, the, the, the flaws in this, are they're pretty small, um, and so it's okay. Um, and I, I respect my colleagues who are making the argument. I, I believe everybody's coming from a place of good faith, but especially after last week where we got a community-wide lesson that the police department is made of human beings and events can spiral out of control, events can have lack of supervision, events can have tragic ending. Like a small risk of flaws um, is an indication of a really potentially very big deal and we shouldn't really be tolerating adding technology that has a known error rate and I'll leave it at that because I'm out of time. Thanks, Vice Mayor. All right, uh, Council Member Swope. Council Member, Council Member Swope. Previous question. All right, um, so um, uh, we're gonna try again. Um, okay. Um, all those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no? No. Um, uh, uh, we're on the board, okay. All right, if you're uh, ready to vote, uh, you'd vote aye. If you're not ready to vote, you'd vote no. Mr. Mr. Clark, tell me when you're ready. Ready? All right. Uh, we're on the previous question. All those in favor uh, would vote aye. Uh, if you're not in favor of the previous question, you vote no. Uh, it takes uh, two thirds.
Council Member Hart. Everybody in? Okay. Mr. Uh, Clark, closed machines, take the vote. Uh, same vote, 22 ayes, uh, no, it's 15. Okay. Uh, Council Member Pulley, you recognized. I was just going to call the question, so I guess, I guess that's a moot point. Uh, let's, I, I think maybe we should. What? Hold on, Councilmember Gamble. What's uh, what's the question? On my screen, I'm at the Swole. I was just making sure you saw. One minute. On my screen, I'm at the Swole, so I was just making sure you have my name. Uh, well, you're after on my screen. You're after Pulley. So that screen got all messed up, so I just okay. went through the list. So, uh, Council Member Pulley, anything? Okay. Uh, now, Council Member Gamble, you're recognized. Thank you. Like it's been said earlier, I've thought long and hard about this, uh, this tool, using this tool to help improve public safety in our city. Uh, we've discussed this for, as it's been said earlier, at least 14 months. And over that time, we have heard from various community groups about concerns about privacy, about concerns about the tool being used as a discriminatory tool. And we have, I believe, as a, as a council, have addressed many of those concerns in this bill. Uh, two of amendments that I presented myself to address privacy, address uh, discrimination or the idea of discrimination by making sure that these license plate readers are not just put in certain neighborhoods, minority neighborhoods in particular, to make sure that they're uh, distributed equitably, equitably across the city and to make sure that, um, that they're distributed in the various quadrants of the city as well. So I believe that Many of the concerns that have been expressed have been addressed in this bill. Also, the idea that the uh, Councilmember Rosenberg's bill, 841, would be different is, is, is true that it is different. The only difference between the two bills are the retention rate and the placement of the license plate readers. This bill proposes to place them on fixed post and to retain the data for no more than 10 days. His bill proposes only to have them on police cars and to retain the data for 24 hours. That, that bill does not do anything more than what we're already doing. We already have uh, cameras on police cars. So to add more cameras on police cars is defeating the purpose. The purpose is to have a tool to use, first of all, to uh, make it less biased when we're stopping uh, or when individuals are stopped because you're only looking at the license plate uh, data. You're not looking at the person, uh, their facial recognition or anything else about the person and also as a deterrent to help prevent crime because the license plate readers would be positioned where the police are not. So it could be used as a deterrent as well. So for those reasons, I am supporting this bill tonight uh, because, as I said earlier, this bill, the, the only difference between the two bills are the retention and the placement, and the other bill doesn't do anything more than what we're doing now. So, and if we really want to look at a tool to help reduce crime, to help solve crime, this is the way that we need to go to do it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, Councilmember Vercher, did you want to be recognized? You're on my list. Councilmember Vercher. Thank you, thank you, Vice Mayor. I wanna say, we all know when our agencies aren't equipped with modern technological resources, our communities suffer. And, and, and I know they're on different spectrums, but it's, but it's all related. We got the trash debacle. What we don't talk about in this city is that we have a public safety debacle. Many of you may, uh, you may not remember, 
But the Waffle House shooting out in Southeast wasn't the first shooting. We've had the movie theater incident. We had the church incident. We had the Waffle House incident. We had people getting pistol whipped. We've had bus uh, monitors uh, be threatened at gunpoint. We have a public safety problem here in the city. And we sit here and we debate about not providing our agencies with the resources to help our communities and our neighborhoods. This is a public service announcement for you folks. This is it right here. They race their cars. They pass you blindly. They run stop signs. They run traffic lights. They run over kids. They burglarize your home. They burglarize our businesses. They vandalize your mailboxes. Steal your pets. Pistol whip you. Why? Because they can. We're not equipping our police department. We're not equipping our police department with protecting our communities. And we have to have a conversation, Vice Mayor. The needs for public safety is different from what it is in North Nashville, Southeast, Madison, and Donaldson. We can't keep looking at this as a one hat fits all approach. My community that I'm elected to represent, they are, they are, they are traumatized. Community neighbors shouldn't have to, they shouldn't have to plan when they go to stores. They shouldn't have to plan when they go get gas for their cars. They shouldn't have to worry about dropping their children off at school. They, should, they shouldn't have to worry about any of that, Vice Mayor. I know we pivot and say this is the administration's bill. This, this isn't the administration's bill. This is our bill. The administration don't vote on nothing. So tonight, we done talked about this for over a year, over a year. Either Either we recognize that we got a, pu a public safety problem in the city or not. And for the neighbors that's watching, they're going to keep racing their cars. They're going to keep passing you blind. They're going to keep running the stop sign. And they're going to keep running the traffic lights. And we're going to continue to have fatalities on our roadways and in our neighborhoods. And we talk about public confidence. I'm tired as a district council member of receiving calls for service when I'm not even the police. All right, council. We got a problem, Vice Mayor. I encourage my colleagues to support this. All right. Thank you. Uh, council Member Hart, uh, you're next. Thank you, Mr. President. It is very concerning to me that we, that we are still having this conversation when at our last meeting, it was blatantly obvious of the implicit biases that exist in the best of people. On last Thursday, we saw nine police officers kill a man who they say was a threat with a box cutter. On Sunday, CNN had a special on traffic stops where they named 16 states with the largest number of aggressive behavior by police officers, and Tennessee was one, as well as one of 17 states with LPRs. This is not by coincidence. It is by design. LPRs are another weapon for the police to use, which disproportionately <laughs> affects blacks and brown people, mostly ages 16 to 24. The governor stated in his state of state address that he is increasing the budget for law enforcement. Laws were passed allowing 18 year olds to carry guns and a permit is no longer necessary. Connect the dots. Gideon's army did a report driving while black and put us on notice. Instead of immediately acting in a positive way, we spent $90,000 for New York University to tell us exactly what Gideon's Army told us, and it was right and it was free. LPRs will produce a stream of data to enhance law enforcement's ability to investigate and enforce the law. As we know, information collected may be inaccurate, placed in databases, and shared without restriction. While the res resolution says it can't be shared, how can we be sure? 
unintended consequences. This is the state of Tennessee. The intent may be good, but it is still harmful, just like the slip up during our last meeting. We don't need another policing tool. Neighborhoods can get their own cameras. We do need to spend, a, we don't need to spend another dime on police weaponry. We just passed a resolution to spend millions on new tasers. Why? When they don't even use them. Clearly, they could have been used last Thursday. <laughs> Crime is a resource problem. Where are our human resources? We need to make available opportunities, investments, workforce development, driver's license restoration, grocery stores, and affordable housing. Traffic stops are the most violent and dangerous encounters. Why add any more? This country spent over $725 million in wrongful death suits, and the cost is still rising. Knowing that 37208 was the highest unemployment community of 16 to 24-year-olds, now it is known across this country that this zip code has the highest number of incarcerations of 16 to 24 years old. All right, Councilmember Hart. Let me just say this one thing, because it's really interesting to me, because when I was writing this statement, I got a notification that HBCUs all over this country were being threatened with bombs. And the college students are in the same age group of the 16 to 24 year olds. They are, not, they are threatening our children and they are threatening our future. This cannot be disguised as people trying to protect us. This is truly for those who are privileged. Landon Estep was white. So no one is safe, especially the have nots and the never wills regardless of race. Please vote no. All right. Uh, Council, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. This is, this is such a complicated issue, and I've heard from so many groups that I respect tremendously with their concerns about this. I, I appreciate the concerns that they have, have made known what I've heard repeatedly is, we don't need LPRs without guardrails. We shouldn't do this unless we've got the right protections in place. What we are doing here is putting policy in place. We are not authorizing LPRs. We can decide later never to spend a cent on those things and never to install them. But we need to have policy in place before we do anything, and it needs to be thoughtful. 14 months worth of listening to concerns and responding to those and changing the legislation so that it takes that into account is what I consider a very thoughtful process. It may not be totally perfect, but I believe that the bill that's before us has taken more of those concerns into account than the one that we are talking about, maybe picking up later and trying to work with. This bill, in addition to the two differences that Councilmember Gamble pointed out, also specifically talks about it, what it's pro prohibited from being used for. And it also specifically calls for a web policy that documents exactly what the policy is so that it is accountable and transparent to the public. I think that's an important difference. It also, this bill sets up a custodian within the department to be in charge of ensuring that only the proper people have access to the information and that there's a paper trail that documents where those accesses are. This is not about gathering data about people. This is about knowing that someone has committed a felony crime and being able to find them before they do more damage. I appreciate the very important and legitimate concerns about people being taken from their homes. And I think that we've worked very hard to take a precautions so that that is very, 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 very unlikely to happen. Is it impossible? Nothing is impossible. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. We have heard anecdotes of things that have gone wrong, and we have heard anecdotes of things that have gone right. This is a bill that I think gives us a tool that will give our police officers less money to spend on things because this will, it requires fewer people. We can then redirect that money to the important things like mental health that people want us to be spending money on. This could, if we did decide to implement it, save on, on personnel, 
It's not necessarily more expensive. I agree that we need to be focusing on affordable housing and mental health. If we can free up resources to do that, then I think this is a thoughtful bill that does that. I appreciate all the people that have written me and I have tried to respond to them about why I think this is um, something that I'm willing to support. And I, I believe that it is important for us to be thoughtful in the way that we do this. I believe this bill does that and I intend to appreciate all the work that the sponsors put into creating this. Okay, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Sledge, you're next. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'm gonna try not to be repetitive. I hope many folks remember right before we started our term, um, there was a letter that was circulated because an individual who had access in our court system to data that they had no business acting on started calling ICE. They started calling ICE on individuals who had shown up for their court appearance. And ICE showed up and ICE took those people. And it's amazing to me as I go through this legislation and we talk about safeguards and guardrails and everything else, it, it only takes one. It only takes one person. It only takes one bad actor. The language in here we have, I'm sure, is just legal jargon about applicable civil service policies. But for the person who gets affected by that, the next step that occurs is their family gets a call because they're in Louisiana. And nobody knows what happened. And I've watched this time and time again to the work that my friends and my family members have done. You can write whatever you want to write on here. It takes one bad actor. And one bad actor changes the lives of families in our city forever. So I, d I don't understand how we talk about guardrails, quite frankly, with a straight face. We know what happens. We know what happens when the stat is accessible. We know what happens when the stat is collected. And the guardrails or the safeguards or whatever you want to call it here are simply not enough. I will, I will harp on something that I talked about the last time we had an extended discussion here. This bill calls for this equipment to be put on major and collector streets, and it, it is done under the guise, I'm sure well-meaning, of equity. It is inherently inequitable. The geography doesn't change. The infrastructure doesn't change. We have areas in our city that have almost no major collector streets. Some of them are the wealthiest parts of our city. And then in the places where we have almost every street that's marked is a major collector street. Go look at the map. It won't take very long for you to figure out which areas have the most major and collector streets. So those can be moved around. They can be put wherever they want. It can't be equitable if the underlying infrastructure is inequitable. That's what's happening with this bill. The underlying infrastructure, the underlying infrastructure of this bill is inequitable. And we should vote no. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council, Council Member Swar. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I was not planning to speak tonight because I know a lot of what I wanted to say would have been said. But I decided to get up and speak because as, the, as people were speaking in support of the, against the bill and listing people that were against it, I heard from a colleague that if they're not happy, they should just leave this state. This is the kind of things that this bill is talking about. This is the implicit biases that we're talking about. And if it doesn't happen to you, if you're not part of that group, you really don't know, you're privileged enough. As a black mother, as an immigrant, as someone that was invited here by the United States government, I'm still on the microscope. And that's what we're talking about. And if we, as a council member, are already thinking that, oh, it's people that just, they just need to leave. We pay taxes here. We live here. This is our state. This is where we, we invest in. We invested here. I spent so many amount of my time on things to make this city better. Because this is my city. But for someone to say, let them just leave, I think that's what we're talking about. I also wanted to address, you know, we talk about LPRs and all of that. Look what happened in, in Mount Juliet. I was telling someone that when I go to Walmart, 
and, and I go through the door and the scanner goes up because somebody did not take the thing out of my, what I bought. It looks as if the old world is looking at me and they're already thinking, oh, there's a black woman stealing something. Imagine being pulled over by so many police officers. The narrative that this bill is only supposed to help so much for, for finding out about cars. For me, for that one life that is lost, for that one family that is impacted, I will lose a million cars. What are we talking about here? What are the priorities? And I think we need to be able to look at that. So I'm asking all of you, please, and, and, and let us stop thinking that if you're against this bill, then that means that you're against policing. We have voted for so many things. For, I stood up saying the tasers are needed because the other ones are old. This narrative about it's either yes or you're against everything is, is very wrong. And we paint each other in a bad way. We voted for a prince seat in the Southeast. We voted for tasers. We just buy cars not too long ago for the police department. How many things have we voted for? But we're saying this is a bill that can impact life. We're saying that let's not do this unless we have enough safeguards. As an auditor, when I walk into a company, I look, up, I look at segregation of duties. I look at controls. This is a thing that will be used by the police and audited by the police, guided by the police. The COB is not even involved in it. So there's not enough controls, that's what we're saying. And I don't know what the rush is to pass it when the people that are impacted are telling you. I move from no LPR to I'll take LPR with enough safeguards. Because I want to listen to people that say we need it too. So why is it so difficult for other people to listen to the people that are saying this is not good enough? This is our lives we're talking about. And for someone to say we should move and leave, that is unacceptable. Thank you. All right. Councilmember Rutherford. Previous question. Okay. Um, all right. So um, that was the end of the queue, but there are people who are now repeating. Okay. I'm just letting you know. All right. Um, so uh, Councilmember Rutherford has called the previous question. Um, we're on the previous question. We'll try again. Voice vote. Uh, all those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Um, you know, the previous question prevails, but um, if you want to vote, I'll vote. Okay, you want to vote? Okay. Uh, only saw one hand. Two? That's, that's three? Okay. All right. Uh, well, just because this is an important issue, we'll take a vote on the previous question. Uh, Mr. Clark? Again, not voting on the bill, just the previous question. Okay, you ready? Um, open with machines. Voting on the previous question. If you're ready to vote, you'd vote aye. If you uh, want to keep discussing, you'd vote no. All votes are in. Mr. Clark, close the machine. Okay. All right, Councilman Roberts, your vote got in. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Clark, uh, close machines, take the vote. So uh, the motion passes. So uh, we are on um, prevailing question, uh, prevailing um, previous question passes. Uh, we are on the vote. So uh, just to remind you where we are, 
Council, uh, Council Member Johnston has moved a passage on third reading of Bill 2021-961 um, for passage on third reading was properly seconded. No more discussion. We are on the board. So uh, if you're for the bill, you'd vote yes. If you're against it, you'd vote no. Okay. Mr. Clark, uh, tell me when you're ready. Uh, we're on the board. Uh, this is the vote on BL 2021-961 for passage on third reading. Mr. Clark, close the machine, take the vote. Ayes 22, noes 14, one abstention, bill passes. Okay. We're on BL 2021-995, that's uh, item number 89. Um, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. If I change from RS10 to R10 zoning for property located at 3408 Hides Ferry Park, uh, Hides Ferry Road, excuse me, approximately 110 feet south of Aston Avenue, 0.47 acres. Councilmember Toombs is the sponsor. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, Committee report. Uh, planning and zoning, Councilmember Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning considered this item and recommended approval. Nine in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Uh, move for approval. Okay, Councilmember Toombs has moved for approval on 995. Um, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill passes. Uh, item number 90, Bill 2021-1026 by Council Member Sledge, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizing PDP Acquisitions LLC to install, construct, and maintain an underground approach from the right-of-way located at alley number 806 at the intersection of Hagen Street. Uh, Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Hold on. There you go. Uh, hold on. Now you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think all committee reports are in, so I'll just move approval. Say it again. I think all committee reports are in, so I would move approval. Sorry. Uh, all committee reports are in. Councilmember Sledge has moved for approval on passage on third reading. Uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Um, all those in favor of BL 2021 1026 for passage on third and final reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill passes. Um, last bill up is item number 91, uh, BL 2021 1047 by Councilmember Vercher. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of Metropolitan Code by changing from R10 to SP zoning for property located in Murfreesboro Pike, unnumbered, approximately 560 feet southeast of Town Park Drive and located within the Murfreesboro Pike. Una Antioch Urban Design Overlay District, it's 1.73 acres, permit automobile parking. Councilmember Vercher, uh, you're recognized on the bill. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Are all committee reports in? Uh, all committee reports in. You've got an amendment that's sitting there. I sure do. I yep. need to move the amendment. All right, so Council Member Vercher has moved uh, uh, amendment number one. It's in your packet. Um, properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Oh, thank you so much, Vice Mayor. What this is, um, this is um, the, the amendment um, came about as um, some neighbors uh, were concerned about uh, the visibility of the lot as it backs up to, uh, to their backyards. So the developer graciously uh, agreed to to put in uh, a, a six foot fence um, along that that property barrier so that um, the the lot wouldn't the neighbors wouldn't be directly looking into the actual lot from from their backyards. So with that, I'd like to move the amendment, Vice Mayor. All right. So Council Member Virtue has moved amendment number one to the bill. You've heard the explanation. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Opposed, no. Amendment uh, is adopted. Um, you're now on your bill as amended. Councilmember Vercher. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval. Councilmember Vercher has moved for approval of passage on third reading of Bill 2021-1047 as amended 
properly seconded. Um, any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill as amended is adopted on third reading. Um, that's, that's it. All right, I want to thank everybody. I know this was a tough night. Uh, appreciate uh, everybody's patience. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn, properly seconded. All in favor say aye. Uh, opposed, no. We stand adjourned. And so the council has concluded a little over four hour meeting tonight, the last hour of which was on the perhaps the most significant legislation the, the council approved and perhaps most divisive legislation the council has approved because the council was quite divided on it uh, throughout all three readings of the bill. This is the bill uh, BL 2021-961 set up a six month pilot project allowing Metro Police to use license plate readers as a fine crying tool and perhaps helps do other police work like finding uh, those who might be kidnapped or, or lost. Um, some, some who are pr proposing the bill say the city's behind even other surrounding communities in using this particular law enforcement tool. While others remain quite concerned about the potential privacy and racial profiling issues. For over a year, the council has been deadlocked about what to do about this particular matter. Two weeks ago, the council received 22 votes for this bill on second reading and after a lot of debate and four efforts to uh, cut off the vote to take a final vote tonight before this finally happened uh, to take the final vote. And the final vote was again at 22 votes in favor, 14 against, and one abstention. The bill now goes to Vice Mayor, to uh, Mayor John Cooper, who has signaled his support for it. In fact, it was quite a division within Metro government. Mayor Cooper was for this, the Transportation Director. Police Chief John Drake was for it. On the other side, there was the Community Oversight Board, the NOAA group, um, made up of religious organizations who have been quite involved in politics in recent years. Public Defender was also opposed to it, the ACLU and many other community organizations. That sparked quite a bit of debate here on the council floor, often uh, uh, emotional. And finally, the council voted tonight, and again, that six-month uh, trial period for this will get started sometime in the next couple of weeks. I don't know whether it starts during the month of February, and that's when the six months starts, where it'll start maybe perhaps in March. We also had another, a, number, a number of other resolutions before tonight that provided the American Rescue Funds. Uh, they approved one that would um, approve uh, 20, uh, would approve uh, $20 million for uh, the creation of a small business recovery fund. There had been a larger one that would have tried to set aside $70 million for that, but uh, there were some changes made in the $20 million plan along with uh, an additional resolution to allocate $1.1 million to the Office of Economic and Community Development to create an inclusive and equitable economic development plan and policy that seemed to satisfy everyone in that. So the larger $70 million request was dropped and the other two were passed. The council also approved another rescue fund appropriation that would allocate $1,046,000 to help with relief, uh, rent relief for the vendors at the Nashville flea market. Uh, this was done earlier also for the people that were uh, at the farmer's market. Uh, with these requests approved, the city has now approved spending $98 million of the Metro's nearly $260 million in American Rescue Funds, up half of which the city has already received. Uh, back in July, the council also approved a $300,000 Homeland Security grant from the state to fund costs related to addressing and identifying equipment and training exercises needed and other things to prevent, respond to, and recover from acts of terrorism. They also uh, approved the application for a $37,000 grant from the Tennessee Historical Commission to allow the local historical commission to continue its work begun last year to develop a comprehensive countywide city cemetery preservation plan. Davidson County is home to over 500 rural cemeteries. A number of memorializing resolutions were approved tonight. We went over those at the beginning of the meeting. All those were approved tonight. They also had quite a bit of a fight tonight about um, a, a proposal to um, for the city to buy taser equipment. This got sort of tied up in a little bit of the what's been going on with the uh, license plate fight and also about what happened on I-65 uh, late, late last week where a man was surrounded by nine law enforcement officers. Uh, uh, some of the officers apparently at some time thought he might have had a weapon. He did not. Uh, he, was, uh, he, was, he was shot by all nine of the law enforcement officers there. There's been quite a bit of concern about that. The city has a pilot program using mental health experts to come out there. There were some indications for this that perhaps the man was in need of some mental health cap uh, counseling on this. At any rate, uh, council members were quite concerned about this. They tried to basically take this bill and defer it first for two meetings, uh, then for one meeting, which they couldn't do, or the first one was tabled. Then there was an effort to try to defer it indefinitely. That also was tabled. And finally, the council voted to approve it 
24 to 3 and 9 to put the contract to move ahead for the, the taser funds. But the nine abstentions was a pretty good sign of what uh, a knockdown drag out it was for a while to get that done. The council also approved a bill that would approve a new lease for Cameron College Prep. This is the third charter school to come through with a new lease in recent weeks. One was approved at the last meeting. One fell just short of getting 21 votes needed. This is the third and final one for the council right now. Finally, the council also approved uh, a, a bill that would uh, amend the threshold for requirements for nonprofit organizations receiving appropriation from metro government, particularly those who are in a smaller area who get grants of less than $25,000 and have budgets of less than $250,000. There was an amendment put onto that. That bill will now come up on third reading. We don't need 21 votes uh, coming up in two weeks. Council is now in recess until the 15th of the month, the third Tuesday of, of February. We'll be here at that time to provide live coverage. Until then, I'm Pat Nolan from good night and good night from the council chambers. Tonight's meeting of the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council has been coming to you live from the council chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's been a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.